you took my place and now I stand to be called your very own it's because you leave Jesus I leave I have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you leave Jesus I leave to bear. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your ministry in this place tonight. You are here to glorify Jesus again and even to glorify the saints. We humble ourselves, we submit to your wisdom, and we ask, O oh God, that your word will find expression unrestrained. I pray that your ministry of making men will proceed unhindered tonight. I decree, O oh God, and I declare that every single one of us will leave this place transformed, will leave this place edified, and will leave this place with our expectations met. Thank you again because of the confidence we have in both your presence and your ability. We decree and declare that forever Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around again. Please pick up your notebooks. Let's get to the teaching for tonight. Come up hither, part two. We're rounding up. Um, I've been thinking very carefully about the subject of transformation. I really have been passionately thinking about the subject of transformation. I am convinced that any man of God that lacks the ability to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming men um, should not be in ministry. This is my honest opinion. Number two, I believe that any platform, whether a church, a fellowship, where the presence of God cannot prevail over men to bring them first into conformity to the image of the Christ and second, to be able to bring them into the reality of their inheritance in Christ, that place deserves to be shot. It does not qualify to be called a church or any kind of gathering whatsoever. Praise the Lord. So all the teachings that we bring here are designed to achieve many things. Um, you must understand. Number one, designed to help us know God. It matters to God. It also matters to me that we know God. That our knowledge of God continues to progress. It's important to know God. It really is important to know God because in the knowledge of God is our confidence. Please listen. In the knowledge of God is our stability. If your knowledge of God is very low, you will not be able to survive today's world. Are we together? It matters. Thank God for the wonderful testimonies, but... The pride of the believer, according to scripture, is not in the acquisition of things. Please listen very carefully. Whether you have a car, whether you have a house, whether a door was opened, whether you get married, whether your wife gives birth to quadruplets, all these wonderful things, as interesting as they are, they are truly um, secondary matters. The real pride of the believer 
is your knowledge of God. No matter what you have, if you do not know God, you don't have anything. It's difficult to understand this because we need most of the things we chase. But I'm telling you, by and large, the real pride of the believer is your knowledge of God. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. He says, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So the messages are designed to give us encounters, to increase our conviction about the person of God. Number two, the messages are designed to show us God's methodologies. You, you have to write this. The teachings are designed to open us up to what we call the ways of God. His methodologies, the way he operates. This, this, this camera man is operating this camera through knowledge. He knows how the camera works. It's not enough to be given the camera as a gift. You must know how it works. Are we together now? Both of them are standing behind their various gadgets on the strength of knowledge. No one will just get up out of zeal and stand behind the camera. They will not be able to do anything much. It matters not only that we know God, but that we understand his ways. I will continue to repeat this until you are well indoctrinated with this truth. That the knowledge, please listen, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his person is infinite it will take us eternity to really know god but the knowledge of his ways as far as our excelling in this life is concerned they are finite they can be learned they can be known and you can apply them it takes a fool to believe god will put infinite methodologies to continue to learn as far as our excelling is concerned no the keys that we need to excel in life are finite. You can hold them and know that these are the keys given to men to excel. So the messages are designed to show us, to cause us to see. Number three. The messages are designed to allow the Holy Spirit to invade our lives and produce dimensions of results in and through our lives that only God can produce. The messages are like ushers. So it is not unusual that whilst the message is coming, the Holy Spirit is just moving in the midst of his people bringing deliverance, bringing healing, bringing breakthroughs. The messages were designed to be conducive for the operation of the Spirit. There are certain things that cannot be taught. There are experiences that only the might of God can produce. This is the limitation of the teaching ministry when it is done purely from a religious standpoint. It will only end up educating people. There are some results that do not depend on education. People need to encounter the power of God and have situations in their lives change immediately. Praise the Lord. There are believers who come before God with emergencies. They don't need to learn any law. They don't need to learn any principle. They can learn when the situation has been solved, the urgency will not allow them to give God their attention. So you're not going to bring, you're not going to help them by trying to say, oh, you're in a situation. You know, listen, listen. Um, you'll be learning a lot today. You hear people say things like miracle alert and all of that. Um, God's idea is not to keep you in the realm of alert. You know that. Um, you're not going to be able to feed your family just with alert. But that there are people who are in situations where it's a waste to give them any book on wealth. The urgency at that point requires a miracle here and now. And so God must be allowed to step in and let them experience his hand. And then when they are at ease, they can now sit down and learn the ways of God. 
that makes for sustainable results. If every miracle comes just through the understanding of principles alone, then many believers will die and never live to learn all they need to be victorious. God is that merciful to solve your problems while you learn. God is that merciful to let you experience his power while you are growing. We cannot, we, we can't peg everybody to receive results only at their level of transformation. It is dangerous. Because there are people who, um, they are where they are not because of anything of themselves. They have come from backgrounds that will not allow them. Let me give you an instance. A man of 60, 70 years, intellectually speaking, his rate of assimilation will be a lot slower than a young man of 20 to 25. Is that true? And so if God is to allow that man learn and know everything about breakthrough, to experience breakthrough, that man will probably need the next 10 or 15 years of consistent mentorship. So unique to that man's condition, he will experience a dimension of God's mercy that only his age range can allow. You will be surprised to find out that whether he understands what the preacher is understanding or not, God will route him to be under the grace preaching, not under the knowledge. He will not get results just by understanding because he probably will be sleeping when the message is going on. And God's mercy is wise enough to shift him to a zone where he can still be a partaker of the hand of God. This is very powerful. Now, if that guy begins to allow you use his life as a standard, you are in trouble. Because the man is not even aware that something special was done to him. So he will say, you can see my life. I didn't do anything. God just keeps blessing me any day. And then you will try to do that at 21. And you will be very surprised. When God vetoes his principles, he's not neglecting them. Is how far his love can go. It matters that we know God. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Not ignorance in terms of absence of knowledge. Ignorance in terms of ill-constructed spiritual information. Information that was not constructed properly to provide victory. So we have a little here and a little there like materials for building a house but not well structured. Random spiritual information scattered around our spirits and our mind and we fish out anyone in the face of danger. We continue to fish them out one by one hoping at least one can work. But platforms like this were provided to give us accuracy so that your understanding will be very exact. You are not guessing. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. Your home, we welcome you today. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your your home, we welcome you today. So come up here, that is an attempt to challenge us to rise beyond the dimensions of God that we have seen and known to a place of greater perfection, to a place of greater accuracy. Revelations chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I want you to continue to believe the things 
that you are learning. The integrity of God is behind the things you are learning. And I give you a guarantee that if you pay attention to labor in the word, to know God and to know his ways, you will be remarkably surprised at how powerful, how powerful God can be when given space through obedience and alignment in the life of a man. When I don't have results in an area, I make sure that I minimize conversing in that area because I do not have the authorization to speak. It is foolish to argue when you do not have results. Our world, many believers are confused today because of the interruption that the pride of resultless people continue to bring in the process of mentorship. That while God is teaching people principles, here comes another dimension of pride in ignorance, interrupting the pace of conviction and assimilation. If I had my way and I had to mentor believers, I would isolate them. I would take it like a system of quarantine somewhere and then we'll sign a disclaimer that if by listening to this man of God for these years and obeying under God, you do not get these results, you hold the person liable. Many of us do not learn because there are interruptions to our convictions. Just when you are about to settle on something as true, here comes a message that delays your believing it. So you start another journey of six months in argument based on what I've had now. Should I believe or should I not believe? While you are, you are debating, you are suffering and your family members are paying the price. Take the risk. Trust something. Take the risk. It's worth the risk to throw yourself and say, let me at least believe something. God, help me. If I fail, let your mercy be there to pick me up. But take the risk. Don't stand in foolishness today. You are here tomorrow. You are there. You are arguing. And while you are doing that, time is going. Take the risk. You must believe something. When Jesus met people who had convictions, he had respect for them. Although their convictions were on wrong philosophies, he respected the fact that they could peg their convictions on something exact. Are we together? Mm. A man who does not have conviction in anything is a dangerous man. He's a dangerous man. Don't stay near that person. It's better to have convictions in the wrong thing. That's why it was easy for God to convert Saul. He believed he was doing God's service by persecuting the Christians. And when God revealed himself, he switched immediately. There was no embarrassment. But the scribes and Pharisees, they wouldn't let Jesus alone to preach. They would be at his crusades. And yet they would never believe. You see how difficult it was? The woman by the well. Madam, you have seven husbands, six husbands. Yes, sir. This and that and that. Yes, sir. And she was changed immediately. The madman in Gadara, you have demons. Yes, sir. You need them to leave. Yes, sir. The demons too spoke. Go and leave the man in peace. And ten cities were saved. Don't be near God. Be connected to him. It's dangerous to be around. You will see everything that is happening, but you will never partake of it. God is not asking for proximity. He's asking for intimacy. Just because you are near God and you are aware of what he can do does not mean you will ever experience him. Are we together? Revelations 4. After this, verse 1, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me, which said, 
come up hither and I will show you things that must be thereafter. We'll stop from verse 4. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Remember that this was not the first time he was beholding the face of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, he saw at a level. Now he's seeing again and he's seeing something different that he did not see before. And there was rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head crowns of gold. Praise the Lord. He said, come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. So the reason why I am asking you to rise is because there is something I want to do to your sight. Please pay attention. That the growth of a believer is based on spiritual illumination. That in this kingdom, your growth is based on the access to the truths, the light that you can see much more than here. Come up hither. He didn't say come. You don't need to come up hither to hear. Like those who are outside now, without the projector stand, they can hear, but they cannot see. Are we together now? You do not need to come up hither to hear. But if you want to see, Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Why? So that I will see what he shall say unto me. Not I will hear, I will see light, growth through spiritual illumination. It is a big deal to God that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Please listen. The victory that has been wrought for us in Christ will remain a story until illumination opens us up to the experience. Please understand this. The mysteries of the kingdom were not designed to remain mysteries. So when we say they are mysteries, we are not just saying some hidden things that were locked up. God desires them to be seen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Your growth in the kingdom will take more than desire. Please listen. Your growth in the kingdom will be on the strength of the quality of your spiritual illumination. Ephesians chapter 3, we we'll read from verse 8. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. Please give it to us. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Look up please, it's projected. It says, unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given. What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse, we're reading tonight. It says, and to make, read with me, all men see, stop. It's a ministry given to a man to make men see. All men, not some men. Not to make men of God see. You are mandated by the grace of God to make men see. Because it is only as we behold that we are changed. Hearing does not change people. As we behold him as in a mirror, the Bible says the glory of God. We are changed. Transformation is difficult until you can see a reference. Please understand what I'm saying. So that in this kingdom, growth is true spiritual illumination. So come up hither uh, is a call, a divine call by the Spirit of God to the saints to rise to a higher realm that can allow your eyes to see, to see, to allow your eyes to see the deep things, the Bible says, the deep things of God. Because when you see higher, then your life will become that. And listen, listen. Success generally in life is, is a measure 
of what you attract to your life by who you have become. You have to understand this. It is not so much of what you do, but who you have become. The realities that you attract to your life on the strength of the new versions of yourself you continue to become. And that happens through knowledge, through light. Spiritual illumination. This is where the major ministry of the Holy Spirit. Do you know, listen, listen, listen. It is very easy to be born again. The Bible says so. That if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Are we together now? Is the word sozo. That you are saved by believing in your heart and then confessing, verbalizing it. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the, if you would permit me to use the word, the most difficult assignment of the Holy Spirit in the saints is the, the rigor of babysitting the believer until he gets to a point where he allows the Holy Spirit to show him the light that it takes to rise in experience. For many of us, we can be born again. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues, and we believe that by that initiation, we have become Pentecostals, as we call ourselves. And then we stay there and never grow and never see and continue to believe that just because time is passing and you can say, I've been born again five years. They say, how long did you know the Lord? You say five years. That's not a very correct answer. It may be correct historically, but it's not correct in terms of transformation. You are not five years in the Lord. It's your results that will show how old you are in the Lord. You are five years from the day you got born again historically. But that may not be a measure of your true age. In the realm of the spirit, our age is measured by the light that we command. We excel in light, not in time. The degree of spiritual illumination that you receive in your life is a measure of your growth. So we continue to flatter ourselves that just because historically we can count a time period by earth's timing from when we consciously gave our lives to Christ, we believe that automatically as time passes, growth is happening. No, the only dimension of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be engaged to knowledge. You grow intellectually by assimilating knowledge, knowledge along the path of a field. Is that true? So you can find an adult who is 20 years, respectfully so, but cannot speak English. Is that true? Cannot speak another language. The person is an adult by biological standards. But when you shift to an intellectual standard, that person is a child. So the passage of time, chronos, does not just make for spiritual growth automatically. The same way it does not make for growth in other aspects. Growth is engaged. It does not happen by default. Please understand this. This is where the pride of many, many Christians lie. We convince ourselves. And you know, sometimes, I'll be talking about it shortly, the, the, the danger of the ritual of tradition. Just because you have been known to be around the things of God for a long time, usually when an election or an appointment in church, you understand, eldership or a deacon, most likely you will be the suitable candidate just to honor the longevity of time you spend around the things of God. But it may be the wrongest decision that may have been made. Oh, this man has been 20 years in the Lord. He's a veteran in the things of God. And while they are talking, God is saying, what, what are you talking about here? Who is the veteran? A veteran is a master. One who by reason of his life and the testimonies that come has been able to test the truth. That which we have seen. 
that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled of the word of life, that's what we teach. Because some of us may need to honestly admit that from the day you got born again, this year was the first step, although it's 10 years. You got born again 10 years ago, but the first correct result producing step started in 2019. So technically, you are about to be one year old. As far as your age with respect to transformation is concerned. Imagine if that one year old man is your man of God. Is the one who was given the mandate to raise you spiritually. Are we together? With gaps in his understanding. What do you think you will become? He will make you distrust what you already know before you met him. The confidence he has in his ignorance will affect you. The vacillations in his understanding will threaten your conviction. The Bible says to be steadfast, to be immovable. It doesn't mean to be rigid so that you cannot change. But that when you find truth and it has been vetted as truth, stay there. Stay there and be there. For instance, if you have believed that there are many gods and Jesus is just one of them. That's a conviction. But now when you are exposed to the truth that there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. Now you have the flexibility to change. And when you find out in truth by the spirit and by the testimony of brethren around you that Jesus is truly the way, the truth and life. You stay there in life and in death. This is my position about the pathway to salvation. That means if I have the opportunity to debate with an atheist, I'm not about to make some historical jargons. This is my conviction by the Spirit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot understand this reality scientifically. You can only open up your heart for the Spirit of grace to minister this as an encounter. Are we together? To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I want to deal with something tonight that the Lord put in my heart. Still in an attempt to bring us into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. The danger of what the Bible calls the traditions of men. There is such a thing in scripture called the traditions of men. And the Bible is not careful to reveal to us how far this concept, this way of life can, can interrupt the rising of the saints to the pinnacle of their Christian experience. Colossians chapter 2 please and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. The word spoil you there is to make a prey out of you. Like you go to war and you, they say you spoil the people. You conquer the land and take their treasures and add to your treasures. He said beware lest any man spoil you. Through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Now this concept has been interpreted from the lens of all manner of you know all kinds of theological dimensions but it is true that there is something called the traditions of men and that the Bible says that it can make men become praise. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 15 we'll read from verse 2 Matthew chapter 15 now some gentlemen just came to harass Jesus and his disciples watch the story we're reading to verse 9 why do thy disciples transgress what 
the traditions of the elders. Someone is asking Jesus a question now. So let's listen to what Jesus is about to say. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Three. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What do you do? You transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Five. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, um, it is a gift by whatsoever thou shalt, you know, thou mightest be profited by me. Six, we're reading to nine. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That means if you can bribe your way out of honor and be free, tradition created that concept. You, you get the point now? Thus, ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Please take note of this. Let's just finish up. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, uh -huh, These people draw it near to me with their mouth and honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Last verse. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In rising to superior spiritual dimensions, the Bible tells us that we are going to confront a demon. We are going to confront a, a resistance. Are we together now? And the Bible calls that resistance not Satan. He doesn't even call the resistance um, sin. He calls it what? The traditions of men. What is it exactly? What is the tradition of men? Let me tell you this. The goal of this teaching is not to produce rebels. Let me clear the air straightforward before I begin to teach. The idea, listen carefully please. The idea is not to get up in self-pride and move around and begin to fight people who seem to sustain revelations that are inferior to yours. I think I need to put this disclaimer very clearly. Are we together? The idea any listen any lifting in the spirit that makes you arrogant and makes you a difficult person and extracts the love dimension from you has been corrupted because growth in the spirit that comes from god must also come with his nature of humility and love are we together these two things must they are the litmus tests of the purity of your spiritual growth and your revelation. The humility, the Bible calls it humbleness of heart. And then the richness of the love of God in you. That if I claim to grow spiritually and the more I am learning, the more pride is also growing in me. It could be that I am being indoctrinated by the vain babblings of men. Revelation that comes from God in its purest form. Number one produces humility. Number two produces love. You now look at those who did not have the privilege of having that truth from the lens of compassion. It's important that I say this because I think this is one of the reasons why and what we call the new move of God, if not managed, will become another dimension of religion too. Everybody in the body of Christ right now has given himself the ministry of correcting every other body. So that's what is going on in the body of Christ now. Everybody who has access to the pulpit is correcting someone, young or old. That's what is trending, correction. Everybody is showing how everybody is wrong. It's terrible. Spiritual knowledge should not culminate in dividing the body it should not culminate in producing arrogant people. No. Paul, at the height of his revelation, he said, I who am the least of all the brethren, is this grace given? It is a grace to make men see, to open their eyes. When I rebuke them, it is a grace. When I correct them, it is a grace. It's more than a desire. You've heard me say, correcting the body of Christ is a grace. Just because you observe error does not give you the fortitude and the authorization to correct. 
because in correcting many people have begun another error it's easy for error to start it just starts as an opinion strongly received and very soon you will forget about the reason why you started it and enjoy the new celebrity status you gain for being controversial there is a grace to correct the body there is a grace to adjust people and bring them within the dimensions of truth so i'm putting this disclaimer very strongly so that you don't mix every young preacher and just believe that all together they are carrying out a campaign either to rebel against fathers or to rebel against denominations no my position as a person about the body of Christ is very very clear I will never dishonor the body to communicate truth I was sent to the body are we together it matters that we understand this so that if the things I say sound difficult for instance then you you refer to what I just said that he's speaking not from the standpoint of sarcasm the goal is to wean us out of imperfection, to bring us into maturity. Come up here, a realm of maturity where you come out of certain things that can peg your growth, hence your results. It is true that there are many things that need to be adjusted in the body of Christ. It is true that there are many mainstream beliefs that need to be edited and adjusted. Please listen carefully. It is true that there are many things that have been proposed by we preachers, well-meaning, sincere mostly, that still needs correction. Are we together now? But it is also true that an attempt to correct other things is an attack. There are things that are ordinances, no matter how con controversial they sound. Calling the body higher must not be from the lens of our convenience. It must be from the lens of God's truth. That means that I will be a wicked man of God to teach you only what is convenient, either based on my educational perspective. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that because of my philosophical standpoint about the miraculous, I don't believe the miraculous. Did you know that every time I read and we reach the miraculous, I will just jump it and wave it away. And sitting under me, you will find out that you are deficient in that level of understanding. Because I do not believe it. I'm not interested in it. It's not working in my life, for instance. So I trivialize it and I force you to trivialize it. A good man of God must be able to stand and teach truth even if it hurts you. That means your goal is the lifting of the people more than the preservation of your name and your reputation. This is a faithful servant of God. That if for instance... I have thought that healing is wrong. Miracles are wrong. And now I have found the truth. I must sustain the courage to say I have found out that God is still a miracle worker. Someone may look and say, what is miracle a lot? Nonsense. There's no such thing as that. You now see. It is true that believers were not designed to live based on miracle a lot. But it will be foolish to ignore the fact that there is a provision in God's economy where he can come through for people. So in an attempt to, an attempt to transit you to a level of greater financial stability, I just extract away the spirituality of wealth. And I just let you know, go and get a job and be, and be nice. You will be ready for a shock because this world is full of spirits. Full of what? That's right. Then on the other hand, if all we do is to tell you miracle alert and that's all you will get. The end of it is that we will leave you a superstitious and a confused people. Are you seeing that? You will never build one bungalow in your entire lifetime with that philosophy. 
you cannot have sustainable results. Why? Because your mind has been spe has been pegged around the 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 ignorance that it is God's God's it is based on God to do everything he wants to do. That's not true. Are you understanding what I'm sharing tonight? Yeah. The word tradition comes from the Greek word paradosis. P-A-R-A-D-O-S-I-S. -P -S. It can be translated ordinances. It can be translated precepts. That's where we get the word tradition. So it talks of ordinances. It talks of precepts, methodologies that were created by men. Either as a product of culture or as a product of pride or as a product of aberrated encounters that were not consistent with the world. Listen very carefully. There are many methodologies today that came as a result of supposed encounters. Look up, please. Look up, please. Look up, please. Let me balance something now. And especially around, respectfully, let me call what we call, um, is it fair to call it the holiness movement? That several people supposedly have gone to hell and have gone to heaven and they have brought forth standards. Many of them as emotional and impacting as they look are not consistent with the conditions provided that by scripture that makes for a believer to make heaven are you seeing that now and if you are not careful and and by this i'm not necessarily even talking of things that pertain on to dressing and all of that those ones are established truths that were there long before i know people that claim to have gone to hell and saw almost every man of god that that has transited in glory. Now, that kind of thing, the, the vision receiver does not know that he or she is under an attack. Just because you went to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are free. The word of God is still Lord, even over the realm of the spirit. You have to understand this. You can travel to a dimension that you have never been before and see all kinds of things. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, anything you see there is higher than what you have known on earth and you can easily receive it and come back with doctrines that later will become traditions, precepts ordinances there are people who have returned with revelations that they saw believers who did not tithe in hell, I don't believe that there is nowhere in scripture that shows that non-tithing takes a man to hell. There are people, for instance, who have returned and, and have given all kinds of propositions that they saw people who had given their lives to Christ. Just because of issues here and there in their lives, they still found them in hell. I don't believe that. <clears throat> Listen. Jesus, listen very carefully. I teach you sound doctrine. When Lazarus, listen carefully. Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man made a request and he asked, he asked Jesus. He said, please, let Lazarus come back to life. Huh? And let Lazarus come and preach to my brethren. And tell them that I am there. In Hades, the place of the dead. And then he says, no, they have the law and the prophets. That means, he said, even if Lazarus should come back to life, they will not believe. But sufficient is the law and the prophets. Listen to them. I still speak to men who are in the earth realm. And I still have the truth of scripture that can guide men. The average believer now, is not sure whether he will make heaven or not. It's like we're waiting to see. Let the trumpet just sound and then I will, if I'm qualified, I will know. But it's wrong. When a woman is pregnant, she knows. When a student graduates, he knows. When you are hungry, you know. When you are full, you know. When you are crying, you know. Why would salvation be that vague? 
It means something. Listen to what I'm saying. You know I gave you a disclaimer. It is not about tell them or anything. I'm teaching you truth. I'm bringing you to a point of certainty. Where you know that you know that you know. Are we together? Yes. There are many concepts in the body of Christ as it is now. That will destroy the saints. If not adjusted. If not upgraded. And sometimes if not totally taken out of the way. Please listen. I will just run through a few of this concept with you and then if God grants grace we can touch a few and pray. Am I boring you? Mm. Number one there is a big problem with the biblical understanding the biblical concept of greatness. Greatness is one of the most controversial issues right now in the body of Christ. What is the standard of greatness? What is the difference between mediocrity or where is the line between mediocrity and contentment? Please listen very carefully. Where is the line between striving to be all that God designed for you to be and lost? You have to pay attention because in both cases you will find scripture that encourage both. You will find scriptures that encourage you. Scriptures like the path of the just is as a shining light. Speak to me, believers. That shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And yet you will find scriptures like godliness with contentment is great gain. So while you want to quickly rise to the shining light, here comes another scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Then it continues by saying we brought nothing to this world. And it is certain that, listen carefully, I'm teaching you something that will make you a sound believer. It is certain that we can take nothing out of this world. But that having food and raiment, let us be content. So why do I need a master's? Why do I need a PhD? Why do I need to be the highest professor in that department? Here the Bible is telling me. Are we together? I read a scripture that says, I search for a man, you know, to stand in the gap. And I say, Lord, I'm the person that will rise. The next verse you are reading is, teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Any dimension that you want to look at life from, the Bible seems to support it. That means there has to be a grace to put things in order. Please listen to me very carefully. Because many innocent people, people destroyed houses that they started to lintel level. Somebody came with a vision and another person will carry bulldozer and scatter everything and say this I will, and will be a missionary. By the next week, he will carry a bell and a cassock and stand by the road with no one listening to him, ringing the bell and shouting and say, repent, I know what I saw. He, it may not be a lie. But something about the inaccuracy of spiritual communication has destroyed that man. Ten years later, he will find out again he was wrong. While he did that, his children did not go to school. While he did that, the land he had has been taken away by a thief and they built a hotel on it. Life may not allow you to make certain mistakes and come back to correct yourself. That's why God is teaching you this now. There are people who made some of these mistakes and had the luxury of returning back. But you can't return others who believe what you said before. What is the balance about greatness? This greatness thing has been fought. Another concept. What is God's idea of spiritual maturity? Everybody claims to be matured in the body of Christ. At least biologically, there's no confusion. Our little ones cannot claim they are mature. Their foolishness will be obvious. Just give them five minutes. They will do something that will prove immediately that they are children. And an adult, no matter how foolish an adult is, you will not become a child again. You are an adult, it's too late. You are just an unwise adult. Are we together? But spiritually, listen, how can I know 
that this person is matured spiritually. There are many parameters we have put in the body of Christ and many of them are largely not consistent with God's idea. Let me give you another, another concept. What exactly is our call as believers? What is our mandate as believers? This has been a big confusion in the body of Christ. Please pay attention. What is our mandate? Others say our mandate is to take over everywhere. Others say you are not taking over anything. Our mandate is just to be born again and to wait until we leave. When are you going to take over Dubai? Have you seen that? There are many people who argue that our mandate is to make Nigeria become like Dubai, the kingdoms of this world. And others say, look, Nigeria will not be Dubai. Stop dreaming. Win souls and make sure souls are saved and rapturable. And both concepts have biblical backings. Please listen. I love to teach these kinds of things. What is our call as believers? Is your call to be a lecturer or to be a preacher or to be a soul winner? Ask the average believer on the street, what is your call? Some will say to win souls, nothing but souls. Another person will say to, to, to build a house for God. What does that mean? Next concept. The subject of faith. The subject of what? Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The subject of faith. Where is the balance? What is God's idea of faith? It's been a disturbing concept. You notice that there are so many people in the body of Christ who tell you, look, all this faith, faith thing, leave it away. And others say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes. It even says that just shall live by faith. Four times scattered through scripture. In one of the renditions, it says that just shall live by his faith. Next concept. Our interpretation of tragedy and negative situations. Our interpretation of tragedy. I'm just giving you a few of them. There are many. The discussion has come up here. A higher level of more accurate spiritual illumination. And I'm showing you the things that have pegged our maturity in the body of Christ. Our inability to find stability in these areas. These are the areas that challenge our convictions again and again. Vacillating concepts. What happens when a loved one dies? Another person says, no way. No way. There's no evil in God. And the person cannot die. Another person will say, I was in the hospital when I had the person saying, Lord, into your, your spirit, not spirit, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he had the person. And the prayer seemed to be answered. He died immediately. Then another person says, no, 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 no. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God cannot be the author of this death. Where is the balance as to the nature of God as far as interpreting tragic situations? In fact, there are many who it is so, it is so, um, it is even so extreme that anything at all that represents even if your car stops on the road based on the propositions that have been given you have questions to answer the first question is where is your faith the second question is where is your God now many believers are confused and then there are others who just allow anything to happen as though believing that God is a miracle worker and believing that God is a way maker is a lie we have extended it now to fight songs. We fight songs, remember? Everybody is fighting every song now. I guess we'll start singing scriptures directly. Just sing. At least nobody will fight scripture. Just open to Exodus chapter this and say, look. And he said this and that. We know we have passed from death to life. Just compose it. 
so that nobody argues any concept. There are people who one little mistake, even linguistic mistake, is attacked. And while they are attacking the song, someone else is having an encounter with that same song, rolling before God and shouting that song. Next concept, one of the very controversial ones again, the concept of fatherhood and mentorship. Fatherhood, mentorship, covering, partaking of a grace, and so on and so forth. It's a very serious concept in the body of Christ. There are both sides of the pendulum when dealing with these issues. There are people, for instance, who have made this issue of fatherhood and mentorship such a big deal as though even your salvation is determined by another man. There are people who will not eat food until it is approved. There are people who cannot travel until it is approved. When, when a woman is pregnant, her pastor knows first before her husband. And yet the Bible says what God has joined. Let no man. He didn't say let no spirit put it. That's a way of putting asunder. Because the man can say, well, that means that what you are trying to say in essence is that this child is not my own. And the same Bible says, wives, submit to your own husbands. There are members who salary the pastors know to the digital detail that even their wives do not know. All of that is under the umbrella of fatherhood and mentorship. There are churches that are almost like cults. You cannot make up your mind that, look, I'm tired. I love you, man of God, but I think I need to leave. I, I sense that God is calling me somewhere. Any other bad thing that happens to you by leaving, the man of God takes credit for it as his grace fighting you. Something is wrong. Listen very carefully. Remember the disclaimer I gave before I started? You now see why I gave it? Cult-like approaches of Christianity. A man of God can step into any house at any time. Peace be unto this house. And just say, what do you have? Oh, man of God, what do you want? Anything for you. Okay, a pounded yam and vegetable soup. Let me have goat meat. And, and you know, all, all kinds of things that we do. These are poisonous concepts. What of the ones that they collect? A, a, a member will receive the blessing from God and buy a new car. And the pastor will collect it. What of houses that have been collected by people? In the name of, uh, of, uh, of Isaac. Are you seeing that now? I'm addressing concepts with you. What of marriages that have broken as a result of the recommendation of a supposed father or a mentor? That you sit down and veto that I, as a man, I will never mention my name, I, as so, 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 as so man of God, I hereby don't like this marriage because the wife is not kind or nice to me and I use my spiritual authority to break this marriage. And the son says, yes, sir, your wish is my command. It's occultism. What about accrediting life partners? That a man can be with his wife and all of a sudden, from nowhere, the geo's wife or the geo can look and say, this guy is a serious partner in this church. This woman is coming to carry him out of the church. It is scattered. Dangerous and devilish. What of choosing for people where they should walk? Simply because of the selfishness of their service in your church. God gives someone open door of 250,000 in, in, in an oil company. And he has another job of, of 35,000 35, near your neighborhood. And he said, I know God. I, God wants you here simply because you are the one in charge of sound. 
and I rather keep you there than to employ another person. What of turning members into masons to build, to build? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody. The message is called come up here. We're challenging concepts that fight our being accurate in the spirit. They are traditions of men. If I'm building this Koinonia cathedral and your head does not carry one block, that's how difficult it will remain on you. No, sir. No, sir. And you see members running to make sure at least one block is on their head. And I shake off every, every, uh, um, 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 uh, what do we call it? Every difficulty in my life. Now, listen. That also does not mean that by faith, you can connect your service to breakthrough. Because people have done it. They have connected their service to certain victims. There is a provision in the dealings of God, but it's not by threat and manipulation. It's by revelation. This is what is going on every Sunday in this country in Africa and around the world. What of the issue of seed sowing? I believe in giving. I believe in seed sowing. You are greedy, you don't sow seeds, you will go down. I guarantee you. God will not cause you. Design in the system. No matter how you argue. So I'm, I'm not here to bring all kinds of debates. Um, what is working for you? You keep it there and what is not working for you, you can change it if you want to. I don't like draw soup. I can't preach against, against my experience with draw soup is that we are not friends. Are we together now? Yes, but draw soup is your favorite, remember? And I'm, I'm, I'm so, I mean, two of us, pro, provided we are surviving. So you believe whatever constructs your success and leave it there. But one thing I know is that in the final analysis, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. But what about seed sowing? A man of God's birthday is announced one year to the birthday. As soon as one is finished, they start preparing. There are, there are circles where the man of God makes his wish. I want a Lincoln Navigator. Limited edition. How much is it? 85 million. And everybody begins, heads of department bring 10, 10. Escorts bring 5, 5. And you know, all kinds of things. It's wrong. All in the name of fatherhood. This, all these destructions come in the name of fatherhood. I know a man of God, respectfully so, that one of his sons got tired and literally ran out of this country because the son pays for every flight ticket. Every what? Flight ticket. Including emergency flight tickets. The emotional son made up his mind one day that I will stand by you. I was sent to lift up um, your hands like like Aaron and her. And the man of God believed that testimony. And from that day, provide, even if you are bringing him for ministration and you are paying, he will tell the son, I'm on my way going. And the son will, it inconvenience them. Sincerely, it's a true story. Almost tore the marriage apart. Because when God blesses them, that, and you know, it's not like you are flying economy or, or, or all of this that you can even book early and book in advance with a low price. Tickets that no matter what time of the year you book is still expensive. Fatherhood. Fathers, in all honesty and respectfully so, have been some of the greatest abusers of church members. All in the name of fatherhood. And remember the idea is don't talk against me. Don't talk to me. You dare do that, a course will come. And truly it will come. Don't think it's just a joke. It will come. But the idea is threat. You don't threaten people into submission. You impact people. You pour your life to them. You become a representation of Jesus. And then as a result, they follow after you as you follow after Christ. That's God's concept of leadership. Next concept. The concept of wealth and success. This one is a big one in the body of Christ, especially in recent times. 
it looks like there is a very strong campaign against what we believe and know to be materialism. And I will never be um, one who proposes um, a lost driven materialistic lifestyle. I come from a very conservative background. It's an advantage to me. And my persona as a person, I'm, I'm quite conservative. But the level of attack that has come on anybody called into the ministry of wealth and prosperity is, is becoming disturbing. Because it's, it's, it makes it look like the moment you capture in your theology a provision for God to bless you and bless people, you are qualified for a harsh attack. An attack under the covering of materialism. And it's not so. Some of the mo most materialistic people around the world don't have any money at all. And yet we have attacked people again and again. Snap a man of God with an expensive anything, anything, even Bible, and they attack the person immediately. Why will you buy this kind of Bible? What part of it is different from the English? You, are, you say, all these kinds of things. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that believers who should rise financially, now fear is making a lot of people to just retreat and say, well, I wanted to share the principles that will make people to rise while they serve God. But now that I'm being attacked, I'm not ready for this. Just serve God and go to heaven. No matter how you get there, God will fix up every remains of you that arrived there. But for now, I'm not, I'm not going to be part of it. It's terrible. And then on the other side, on the other hand again, I'm telling you there are people sincerely, let me tell you, I've heard different gospels on wealth and success that is poisonous. What did I call it? Poisonous. Dangerous is the kind of gospel that takes God out of your life. Lost, lost after things. Do you know that, let me tell you this sincerely, You've, you've seen this suicide happening all over now. People dying around. I believe that part of the reason may be the frustration that is coming based on the gospels that we have taught people. Because if I teach you, for instance, that your true worth is based on the jeep you have or the house you have and you are now 38 years old. Are we together now? Yes. No husband, no wife, no car, no child, no jeep, no house. You will hang yourself. We have to be careful because the communications that we are bringing in the body of Christ and sometimes even we men of God create a basis for competition. Oh, this is my son. You are a true son. You mean that car outside? You just brought it. Oh, amazing, amazing. This grace is working. And other sons are saying, so what are we now? That this thing is not working. I mean, the Bible never said the sons of Elijah stopped being his sons. Although one person received the mantle, they were still sons. So most believers now are under pressure. Look at the speed with which men of God are informed the moment any believer does anything. That is nice. Oh, come to my house. We tie a ribbon from one side of the building to the other. And the man of God comes to cut the ribbon. And then the son becomes a deacon. And then the rest now that may be struggling around, they are under pressure. And the wives will usually say, my husband, are you really a man? What are you? You are not, I mean, you, you, every, what kind of a man are you that all doors are closed towards you? Prayer or no prayer doesn't make a difference in your destiny. And the man sits down and is on his way to taking drugs or killing himself. Look at young people who are depressed now. Once you cannot wear something expensive on your head as a lady, how much is this we've won? 700 naira. Ah, you are too beautiful um, um, for this kind of we've won. It's a dangerous indoctrination. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. So what? The, did God teach that just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you, you run your life down?
This is what has destroyed a lot of people. People have gone to buy cars they don't have the money to maintain. People have gone to buy houses and, and debt is yoking their neck to death because of a point that was trying, was, was trying to prove. There are churches that don't have the capacity for expansion yet. They just got up, were taking over and now open a branch in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Maiduguri, they killed it. Another concept, the concept of what we call glory realm and supernatural encounters. Listen very carefully. I'm a person of encounters, but listen carefully. There are all kinds. Do you know, let me tell you, something happened in Zaria. Those of you who were there, I, when this concept came into this city, those days, by God's grace and with all humility, we're privileged to be some of the people who were at the forefront of the move of the spirit when it had to do with encounters and supernatural manifestation of heavenly things. I remember those times we downloaded videos of Ruth Heflin and Joshua Mills and all of these people to show angels, visitations and all of that. But something strange happened. When that move started happening in Zaria and people started having gold doors, people started having this, that move did not reach two weeks and everything left. And the Lord told me that the reason why that thing left was because he, he did not want what he was doing in Zaria to be corrupted with supernatural experiences. People will sit down and pray for hours looking at their hands, waiting for their hands to shine as a result of gold dust. Everybody will hold everybody's leg, whether short or not, and say, sit down, that leg must grow. Have, did you see that concept? And just imagine in their minds that leg is coming out. The person was fine. When legs grow, don't you see it? This, listen, listen. And most of these things happen with charismatics. So the average man of God is looking for this something spooky. And your hand is wet and you say, wow, supernatural oil. Let me tell you, many of you know my experiences. I've had these supernatural experiences of oil, of all of these things. So I know what I'm saying. What of those who sit down and imagine angels? It can even be an attack. It can be a spirit being. Now, please listen to what I'm telling you. So people keep roaming around searching for visions and searching for experiences. They close their Bible for weeks and they, are, they just want the room, something wind. This is the wind of this. They quickly record it on a phone. And say that I had an encounter. And the devil says this is, this is an open door. And one day that person will get a visitation. Because you don't know what a spirit looks like. Angels don't have feathers. Read your Bible. No, feathers are not for angels. We pride in these experiences. I am a woman of God because I see visions every day. I am a man of God because I see visions. A believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says, I'm going on a three-day fasting. Lord, what is in this vision that I can't see? Are we together now? And you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital with, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. Am, am I, am, am, it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. 
People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I can, now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied the biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaf from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture, until this era of visions just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. Because you have touched something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people walking in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut the mouth of, of, of the people from my region. And you receive something because everyone that seeks... There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religions. They just want this out-of-body experience desperately. They want to come back with messages and they've had it. And many of them, you know that there are different pseudo-Christian sects that have all kinds of encounters. They can, they, they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travels. To the point now we are confused in the body. Because we have to balance this. It is alright when an insincere person encounters these graces. But what happens if these graces have been received by your friend? Do you call your friend fake? Do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake? One of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, uh, 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 what they call it, phones. With all kinds, you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day you will be hearing the tongues. And it will sound like Arabic. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something. See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates, the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers? It was a tra Anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals, you will know that these are things that... It's, it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers. And it's part of the things that because God is preparing the church for the move of God, and so some of these ordinances have been restored, but if they are not guided... Any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. 
So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Koinonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You find your own path and you are singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands. More grace. It says lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings who attempted to correct scripture. And that's how error came. A time will come, I pray it does not happen, where you will be afraid to go to church because you are not sure of what that version of teaching will open you up to. Even these mysteries you see, these mysteries you see, if it's not guided, you will enter into mysticism in the name of mysteries. Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we are concerned about. Because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh. His ascension. His glorification. That is the highest mystery. Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say, there are many people who say, ah, they send me texts. Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night vigil and I want to share a mystery. I said, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fishes demon from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you would never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. Go and, and give value. To whom much is given, talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. There are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Habba. God speaking, Habba. My son. To whom much is given. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. 
you have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up hither is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today place value on anything in my life outside of Christ my true worth is the blood of Jesus my true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars please listen to me you will never find me depressed not over money not over house I will excel God will bring the houses he will bring the cars but never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence a newer car or a better car will not suddenly make me know that ah, God you are faithful he's faithful the apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did is God speaking to someone now this must be the basis of your confidence this is this is a this is a vaccination against depression Apostle, look at my life. Guess how old you think I am? Can you believe that I'm 41? Nothing is happening in my life. And you leave God. I know that God wants to bless you. But if you leave God because nothing is happening, you were not taught well. Leaving God because things are not going well in your life, my brothers and my sisters, is proof of weakness. It's not strength. What shall separate us from the love of God? That you get to a point where you stand. It is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith. Apostle, I'm coming for miracle service next week. I'm trusting God for a child. I agree. God will give you a child. But that you can look at God and say, Lord, if in my lifetime I don't have a child, you are still Lord. You are still King. I will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children. A lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? No. I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. You, this one looking at me. Yes, please stand. Where are you coming from? This woman, let me tell you a little story. This woman you see follows me almost everywhere I go to minister. She's had a child with a condition and she's been trusting God for the healing of that child. I apologize if I embarrass you. I hope I didn't. Look at this. I'm just trying to encourage people. Up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman you see followed me with her child. I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God. And I knew that it was not just for the child. From Enugu, she's here again to come and receive the word and to go. Please listen to me. I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. Go and get that message and listen to it. There is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance. If we do not balance this, we will be in big trouble. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things. Brothers and sisters, we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God. God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry. We will never look down on the role of the blessings of God. But far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ. With or without them, I tell you the truth. Christ remains Lord. This is what you should learn. All this, this backsliding talk. God didn't do this. I, 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 no, it is, it is proof that you are not grounded. 
if I come here and I find only 10 people in Koinonia, I will go back concerned and I'll say, Lord, what is wrong? But to say, okay, Lord, I quit ministry. I will just go and write books and do seminars. No, sir, I'm a ministry for life. This thing we have come, it's not, it's not an ambition to use and make money. It is not because we didn't have options. It's a call by revelation. We have pledged our life and our blood. So when people love God and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry, say me, I've retired. Oh, what are you doing? I want to start a block industry. Did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry? No. But somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them. Please listen to what I'm telling you and you will be sound and you will be balanced. A precious, precious man of God that I love very much. Just known him for not too long. Um, it's possible that he's even following now. Um, he lost his precious loved one. And I remember us just conversing through the night and he was just crying and saying, Apostle, I cannot believe this. This precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord. And I told him, listen to me. I'm a man of God. I'm a miracle worker by God's grace. I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry. But one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God, we tell him, Lord, you are greater. I played for him a song from my phone, Don Moen's song. And I encouraged him. I said, just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you. And when he finished, I told him, I'm standing by you and all of that. A foolish man of God would say, no, no, let's forget this. Let's, let's go to that mortuary. I've been to the mortuary before. I've told you this thing. It doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the ways of God. It's the foolishness that is destroying young ministers. They will call police for you one day. If you don't learn the ways of God. There are times. That you may not have answers as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed. It reminds people again that you are not God. And it reminds you too. The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women, it disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life when your business fails, when your property is repossessed. I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience that in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Megirma. Megirma, 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 Sing it one more time.
more time. If there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, please, they can sit. Some of this, this space here, some of the worship team people can stand up. The gentlemen can stand up. Stand up and stay by the wall. Let our mothers sit down. If they are mothers or fathers, if you are, if you are an adult, but you are still young, please stand. It doesn't mean that just because... We know what elderly is. If you don't look like one of these are mothers, please stand. If you don't look like one of these are fathers, stand. But just to make sure that uh, we help them. If there's a pregnant woman, let her sit. Our pregnant ladies are... No, no, no. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. If you're pregnant and there is a reason... Why you cannot stand, just wave your hand. Somebody will help you. Why am I doing these things? So that you will learn. And then you will know that these things were not acting. Are we together? We are not doing it to demean the younger people. But we are doing it to show you the excellency of the practice of the law of honor. Are we good? Can I continue? We'll find somewhere. You know, I'm so excited. It just reminds me of how this thing all started. Those days, those days, there was no suit, no nice cloth. Don't let all these things deceive you. We would wear just anything was fine. We didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that would cause pain in your wardrobe, you just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop this rain and it didn't stop. Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside. That you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God, as a believer. And I stop you. And the rain stopped. Or the rain did not stop. And then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged. And you say, Lord, this thing does not work. No. Listen, I'm not teaching you to be faithless. But I'm teaching you that when things do not work, do not be embarrassed. He is still Lord. He is still Lord whether results happen or results do not happen. Okay? Right, so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we'll spend time praying. If this rain does not stop this night, you can be sure that we are going to pray until you come up here that this night. <laughs> what, what I've been looking for, I finally found. You'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up here. That. The visions you've been wanting to see, you'll see this night. You will pray until the visions come. Greatness, please look up. In this kingdom, God is not against you're being prosperous and you're being influential. Let me balance that very quickly. I've heard men of God say all sorts of things. If you're standing and you can't write, don't worry. You can always get the message. I know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet. Don't worry. I've heard preachers say that God's idea is not for you to be the most blessed person. God's idea is not for you to be this and that in a bit to create balance to materialism. That teaching in itself 
is error. God is not against your being great. Please listen. God is not a God of mediocrity. Heaven is not a place of mediocrity. Are we together? And everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received, there is excellence, there is leadership, there is influence. So it is all right to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is all right to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? That when you say, I am a failure until Naira and Kobo in my pocket proves otherwise, there is a big problem there. I am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life. I am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child. No. No. That's where I have a problem. A man's life, the Bible says, does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. That means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing, that have everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars true wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ if you're with me please say amen, amen. you have captured my heart consumed my heart with your love You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Very powerful song. Sing it one more time. Yeah, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. And if all I say is Jesus. That's more than enough. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Money minus Jesus is poverty. Education minus Jesus is illiteracy. Influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters, to know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all costs. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously 
the moment your ATM falls, by the next day you're on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dress, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is packed. When you know this, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet, you stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful, more important because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it's afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come Sam, come Pastor Alpha, come Pastor Femi. Now look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me for instance that you stand among them and you feel I'm not rich. I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe, this kind of that. And then you back out. This guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements, but not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent, but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold I've got something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more What's the other part? I've got something more than gold
Vanessa, when you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity. Don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah! This life is over. No job. No nothing. I tell it to the world, Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to myself, Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to the world, Jesus, you're more than gold. I tell it to the world. Somebody met me years ago and said, there's a trend of suits, apostle, that at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell. Because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the Spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure to say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz, not a Navigator, not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ. God forbid, but if my house is to catch fire now, and I stand before God to tell you, if my house is to catch fire, and they tell me, Apostle, you have one minute to carry the most valuable things in your house, before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible, I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. (laughs) 
And it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books and I can carry my phone, my contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. The greatest asset this man has that stands before you is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. It is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ. I need to drum this again and again. So don't act. Whatever leaves you, check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain. Provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. You will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything. One more time. You. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha, Omega of my life. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phones? A what? iPhone. So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect. Demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No. That's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding. That everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our lost, driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone.
Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I'm not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. You are not great the day you enter your own house. Hmm. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea. The carnality in this our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says with all this you're going to church, look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him, no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information, it is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross, let me tell you sincerely, he stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned and then my promoting the interest of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Believers, talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Huh. No. The closest thing to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles. And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me. And the bike man will come and drop me. I would drop from the bike with my Bible. And enter with joy. I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and pick me. I rebuked them. I said, never collect any member's car to come and preach, to come and carry me. Coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head. When I was fasting, the car was not there. 
So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is sub. In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. It is the world of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard, and through my life and ministry, he has become a man of God, for instance. This is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you, I am great, tell him, show me who you changed. If you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the truth that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or, or, or making for the betterment of people's lives. There are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you and the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He is everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. Is you. you are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. So I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver lay it before him. My achievements lay it before him and say, Jesus, you are above them all. That when men clap for me because of things, I remind them that none of these things can take you. Are we together? We are going to pray. Thank God it's raining. You will pray. Oh. You will pray. There's boss to carry you. But you will pray. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please give me volume. Much less love and endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, listen. What is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hey, your presence is heaven. It from the depth of your heart and with understanding, your presence is heaven. 
First prayer point. Lord, I'm tired of exalting shadows in my life. Let everything be dethroned tonight and Jesus alone lifted to the zenith, the pinnacle of my life. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of exalting certificates above Jesus. Tired of exalting my bank account above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting anointing above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting visions above Jesus. Tired of exalting gifts and dreams and prophecies above Jesus. Tired of exalting ministry above Jesus. Marriage above Jesus. Business above Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Don't look around. Pray. Be lifted high, be lifted high. of this world let me show you how to truly be great when you come up here Jesus also comes up here in your life higher higher than anything Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point is a very personal prayer point. Lord, what attachment do I have to anything in this world above you? What attachment? There is nothing wrong with having things. But when these things have you, they are about to destroy you. Lord, detach me. Detach me from any other thing that is not you lift your voice and pray pray seriously the 
detach me. Detach me from the obsession for money. Detach me from the obsession for fame. Detach me from the obsession for things. Detach me, oh God. Let my true value be Jesus. Please pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Detach me from the pressure of wanting respect on account of what I have acquired, on account of my certificates. They are not useless, but they are nothing nothing to be compared with Jesus Christ. Detach me, oh God. Detach me, oh God. Is someone praying? Use tonight, use this opportunity God has given. Detach yourself. And with it will go the high blood pressure. And with it will go the depression. And with it will go the suicidal thoughts. I detach myself the pressure to have things so as to gain respect. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now listen everybody. We are praying. There are many of us here we come from families. Please listen. And we come from territories where the prevalent mindset is earn your respect by the things you show. Are we together? Now, there's nothing wrong with our families and our region. But I'm just saying that many of us by default are under pressure. They look at you as a lady and say, the day you bring the man you will marry, then you will earn our respect. The day you bring us a child, you will earn our respect. The day, gentlemen, you bring us an employment letter from a reputable firm. So there's pressure everywhere. What are you doing? Well, I'm trusting God. I'm teaching in a small place. That's it. You are, you are a shame to this family you hear. You are a reproach to this family. Look at your younger ones, they say. Look at this and that. You are going to pray. Father, the stress. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to dethrone those things and say my life and my work will never be built on the expectations of men. I cancel it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. I know you've not been able to take in but refuse to allow yourself what come from being able to be pregnant pregnant or not Jesus exalted in your life is the greatest asset you have living in a rented apartment or not Jesus in your life Christ glorified in and through you is your greatest testimony Apostle, I've never healed the sick. I also want to work miracles. And you are fasting and killing yourself for the wrong reason. My greatest testimony is Jesus glorified. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is that God dwells in me. The Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. We are going to round up shortly, but listen to me. There is no telling the degree of pressure. Some of us are sitting on pressure every day. Your father says at your age, I was already a millionaire. You are now 35. Shame on you. You can't even send money back home. And so all you are seeking for in God 
is his hand to prosper you so that you will buy a car and rush back home and say finally you want a car here it is if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than Truly, if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than Prophesy gold. one more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Listen to me. When you see me teach like this, it is because the Spirit of God is ministering to us. Brothers, hear me. By God's grace, we will continue to teach you the principles that will empower you and make you great. But don't get into... That's why many young boys today are becoming criminals. Do you know why? Because they have told them you must bring... God gives people speed, I agree. But remember my teaching, when your soul dies for you to prosper, it's not true prosperity. Many young men right now are becoming criminals. And you know why? Because of pressure. And please let me encourage us, those of us who are parents here and listening, let's be careful as we put pressure on our children. Go and bring a man for me, to, a man that you will marry. Go and bring a woman that you will marry. Give us a child. We are waiting. Bring a car. We are tired. Let's be careful. It takes time for anything valuable to emerge. Allow people to go through the law of process until God places his hand upon their lives. Every one of us started from somewhere. If you saw some of us 15 years ago, there will be nothing in us that is desirable. But God was in the making. And we were given the opportunity to grow. We must give others opportunity to grow. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody put pressure on you and say, bring this. Some of you at home right now, you don't even have gari and sugar and you are embarrassed. Because when they tell you, confess, the, I am a child of God, I am a this and that, you are ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, my brother and my sister. Every one of us, there were times, we, we, you, you hear me share my story here. I'm not ashamed of yesterday because yesterday was the ladder that brought me to my today. You are climbing your ladder, climb it with honor. When someone comes to your house and all you have is Gary, don't go and borrow minerals from any shop. Tell the person, as you know, as Apostle has been teaching, I'm on my way climbing the ladder. Sincerely, I don't have much physically. A wise person will say, I understand. We listen to the message together. A foolish person will say, you are a shame. Leave him to carry his ignorance out of your life. Are we together? I want to drum it. It is ugly to see men attached to things. The secret to getting things is to be attached to God. The more you are detached to things, they will follow you. You will drive them, they will refuse to go back. There is nothing in my life today, I stand by the truth of heaven under God. There is nothing in my life today, I cannot give. There is nothing that is too special in my life that cannot live. No. When anything enters my life, there is an orientation center before it finally arrives. It's given an orientation. You are a temporary asset. At any point, the master calls, you are out and you are going. The only thing that I will die protecting is Christ in me, who is the hope of glory. If I fall down here, my brothers and sisters, and I stop breathing, I know what you will do. You will pray for me for a few minutes, trying to get me back to life. And then if it does not work, the doctors will come together and you will rush me to Shika. And if they put a stethoscope and say, ah, this guy has died. 
how can our apostle die while you are talking I'm watching you I'm saying no oh dear you better listen to my messages go back and get koinonia I'm on my way I'm already going happy you pray for me to come back I see those chariots you are joking I'm on my way going I mean apostle don't talk like this what if you die don't be foolish Don't you know death also listens? Freedom came in my life when I stopped holding things. Freedom came in my life when everything minus Jesus in my life is a stranger. Everything in my life is a visitor. No visitor sleeps in your house. No matter how late he must look for, bike and go away. The only occupant, not even a tenant, is Jesus. He's given me peace. I'm telling you sincerely. I live a very peaceful life. The higher he lifts me, the more confident I am. If you are confident because an alert entered your account, something will happen when the alert is no more there. This is what God is working in you today. I know it looks like time is going. But pay attention. Could this be why you are praying and blessings are never coming? Because the affinity you have for those things is a risk for God to trust you with it. There are preachers who want anointing so bad they will remove Jesus to create space for the anointing. Jesus, come out. Let me have some more space for oil. Billy Graham never performed any known miracle as we know i don't believe that is the optimal for a preacher we should press to every dimension available but one thing we know is that billy graham changed lives his gospel molded civilization captains of industry listen to him kings listen to him that is true wealth Come up hither, and the first thing he saw was the throne room. Come up hither, and the first thing he saw was the throne room. When he was down, he saw different things, but now when he rose higher, his attention was called to the worship of only one person. The rain is almost done. We'll pray one more prayer. And then I'll take the altar call and then we'll be ready to dismiss ourselves when the rain is done. But please hear me. The Lord told me something years ago. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I thought it was a joke. And I said, Lord, you mean that I become a mirror? It's easy for me. It's easier to reflect Jesus in our world today than to reflect yourself. The world will always show you something wrong. So reflect Jesus and be at peace. If you reflect yourself, they will say you didn't bab well this week. Your head is too big next week. Ah, you reduce it, it's now too small. You would have left it the other way. Reflect Jesus and enter your Sabbath hide behind the cross and let men know if he prospers me he only prospered so that his name will be lifted if he anoints me he only brought the anointing so that his name will be lifted listen please don't trivialize this night's teaching I'm, I'm pointing to you the origin of high blood pressure BP and all of these things come from this revelation. I need to prove a point. How will they know I'm not an anyhow person until I show? So let me get a job and show. My life and all that consists in this life has been poured like a drink offering. I've told the Lord, do whatever you want to do with me. 
sincerely it's a prayer I have lost the pain and the psychological pressure that comes trying to live life my own way I found peace when I lost the consciousness of trying to prove a point I found the anointing when I stopped thinking about miracles and breakthrough when I started thinking about Jesus and the people he sent me to then the anointing came for as long as I thought about my reputation let people know that you called me very sincere but it never brought grace but I said Lord let them see you through my life give me an opportunity to be a blessing within the lifetime you have given me let me tell you this if Christ tarries and my work on earth is done I don't want it to be written in my grave oh great man this all that is nonsense he changed lives ah what a testimony he was truly a lover of God and he, through his life nations were restored to Jesus if you can write that buy a coffin of 2000 and put my body inside it put it even inside pajamas that's the closest thing to sleep use the suit money and give a man of God who is still alive don't waste money by mundane nonsense I have learned the value of living the value of living is living for Jesus when you live for Jesus you have cheated life that in life and in death you have won hmm. you will live a happy life depression free depression free you learn that it is about you but not all about you can I pray for you take it down I want to pray for you we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all us I have searched for you and I have found you I have found you you've won my heart and I will lift my voice to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart if you will search for him you will find him truly you will find him with all your heart that's the call tonight if you will search for him you will find him you will find him where all your Father, I cry to you, O God of heaven, on behalf of your precious people. I love them with all my heart and you know it. I desire that they rise to dimensions of rest. And I'm showing them one of the ways tonight that the way to rest is to live for Jesus the understanding that you are the definition of greatness in a man and that nothing nothing can define greatness in any man higher than you by earthly standards money achievements can seem to bring certain levels of influence and they are important but teach us tonight the all-surpassing excellency of Jesus in our hearts the hope of glory the crown the zenith the definition of greatness in this kingdom is Christ enthroned in a life teach us that the definition of greatness in this kingdom is not the acquisition of things but Christ enthroned and exalted in a life 
help us oh god to value your presence more than money to value your presence more than gold to value your presence more than the mundane things of this world and lord in placing that value on you may we lay up gold as dust in the name of jesus christ I detach you from any connection and any affinity you have to things, especially money. I declare that by this service, let there be a cutting away in the name of Jesus. The obsession that you have to derive respect based on the things around you, I pray that God will redefine value to you. I pray for grace to survive the pressure that comes from society to conform to a mold so as to be respected that you will teach all around you that true value is Jesus and Christ enthroned in a life in the name of Jesus Christ listen and I pray for you that whilst you focus on exalting Jesus may everything that you need even the things you did not dream will come to your life at this level may my God bring them to your life in the name of Jesus Christ nothing in this life will ever possess you in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray sincerely sincerely please walk on us walk on us let this detachment continue even throughout this weekend in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now, please listen. Those are the other overflows. I know you may not be able to come, but there are people in here right now. Listen to me. On hearing my teaching tonight, the Lord is calling you higher, higher than the realm that you have been. And for many of us, Jesus is speaking to you, even through my voice. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, it's time for you to surrender completely and to receive of my life. Jesus is asking many of us, you've been carrying luggages. Please hold on, no movement, please. Let me just make the altar call. There are people here that the Lord is speaking to. Probably you're here for the first time. You've been here multiple times and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, you have to relinquish attachment to these things. You need Jesus, not just as a religious proposition. Jesus did not come for Christians. His assignment is not to make Christians. His assignment is to lift men to become the lovers of God, representations of the life of God. You are here and you belong to any of these categories, let it be my joy tonight to lead you to Jesus. Nothing to be ashamed of. If you are in the crowd and you wish to come, I'm sure that the ushers will clear the way. Wherever you are, I'm counting one to five. Our time is up. Please boldly make your way right to the front here. Right to the front here. Someone is bold enough to make that decision. Don't wait for someone to be the first. Be the first. If someone is coming, please clear the way. I see a few people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Please clear the way for them. Is this the best you can do? I don't believe this is the only person. There are people the Holy Spirit is speaking to. The Holy Spirit is speaking to. Make your way quickly. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He's giving you a new beginning. This is why you came tonight. No matter how far, make your way. Don't say, Apostle, they are looking at me. Please stand. Please stand. They are not looking at you to laugh at you. God bless you, Ma. God bless you, sirs. They are not looking at you to laugh at you. This is a family. They are looking at you to encourage you to say, I rejoice with you and I salute your boldness. Hallelujah. In one minute, I believe that there are people too who are saying, Apostle, I remember making such a decision, but right now as it is, I know that I need to truly rededicate my life to Jesus. 
I'm not doing it for the first time, but I really need to do it seriously. I feel that the, the things of this life have strangled the reality of Jesus Christ in my life, and I need that restoration. You belong to that category and you want to join them. In one minute, our time is up. Please, quickly, quickly, make the bold step to come join them right now. It's not by force. Nobody will pressure you, but you know yourself and you know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. The Bible says that in the day that you hear his voice, it says, harden not your heart as they did in the provocation and in the wilderness. Are you coming? God bless you. Join them very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute your bold decision. May I request all of you who are standing, just lift your right hand, if you will, and repeat this prayer after me. Do so with understanding. Don't be embarrassed. Jesus is here. The one you came for say Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you with all my heart that you are the son of God tonight I have heard your word and I desire that you be exalted in my life therefore I receive your life in exchange for my life I receive your righteousness I receive your grace and I declare that from tonight and forever I am a child of God I declare that my sins are forgiven Jesus is my Lord my Savior and my King Amen Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for these precious ones. I decree and I declare over you that the life of God that is now within you will begin to produce and it will be effectual. In the name of Jesus, I plant in you a hunger for the things of the Spirit. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will continue to move from glory to glory. You will mount up with wings as the eagles. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. And I declare that the joy of salvation is yours. And you will begin to walk in the consciousness of this life. In Jesus' name I pray. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. The Bible says, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Abalakato sabrande kebara susi abahashi. Are you praying? Sabrande skalabrado jate brehese de bakatash. It's another opportunity for fire, for grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One last prayer. Father, give me an encounter tonight. Please cry from the depth of your heart. Give me an encounter. Show me something I have not seen before. Open my eyes to see something I have not seen before. Let my ears hear something I have not heard before. Grant me clarity. Grant me illumination. It's in you, Lord. It's in you. 
and I will never settle for less when I know there's more than family. Turn it into a I know, place. I know. Thank you for your presence, for your power, for illumination, for insight, for wisdom. We bless you and we acknowledge you even tonight. Do mighty things in our midst. Let there be impartations. Let there be transformation. Let there be all kinds of encounters at the instance of your word. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Good evening. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around again. It's always, always a blessing for me. Every time I have the opportunity to bring the word of God, you will think because I've been doing this for long, I should be used to it. It is always fresh, always new. My passion remains on fire and I always long for the times when we share together in his presence. Just a few things and then we'll get to the word. Um, number one, uh, please listen everyone inside and online. Um, I want to encourage us particularly over the issue of testimonies. Now, truthfully speaking, we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways. Uh, my, my phone is full of hundreds of remarkable testimonies. Um, and I got to find out that the challenge for many people is the system that allows them to come and share. There are so many people who would like to share their testimonies, some seated here, some online, but it seems like there's been a bit of difficulty, and I just want to simplify the process. It's pretty straightforward. We have our testimonies. Please listen. Our testimonies are handled officially by the media department. They have their email address for those who are outside of this environment and not localized. And you can always, you are at liberty any time of the week to post your testimony and just grant permission that it be shared. And there will always be a way of collating them together. I think that there should be, um, there should be, okay, the, the official number is there. That's the media line. Please, everyone, you can have it down and let as many people. There should be an email to please project an email that they will officially This is because we believe in testimonies. We really do. Testimonies are more than just a manifestation of the anointing upon a man. It is how people know that God is at work in a place. Testimonies are very important, vitally important. It's important that people know that not only that God is alive, but that he's at work bringing glory to the name of his son, Jesus. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad. The things that Jesus did it's important and I want to challenge everyone here as we continually experience the hand of God the prophecies that come the the spiritual truths that are communicated alongside the manifestations that follow from our obedience it's important we make it a culture now please don't get into that psychological trap of feeling guilty for coming every week to share your testimony of course provided everyone generally has a testimony but we would just like to appreciate testimonies that would consider notable 
and the reason is because we want to challenge the faith of the listeners are we together while it is not it is not um too small a reason to come up and say thank god that i'm alive i think that um it's, it's a testimony that would consider general not to demean it but then uh, we would want to hear testimonies of the mighty hand of god so that the faith of someone can be encouraged listen you would see people sitting across like this and see everyone smiling uh, until you discuss with them the problems that they are sitting on and trusting god for a miracle so, so they need to know that god is at work so please make it a culture and um be your brother's keeper on this wise do well to encourage your people some people are just shy they are really very timid could be for sociological reasons but let me tell you this is a home that is opened and loves everyone with no prejudice with no discrimination whatsoever if you cannot speak english speak hausa if you cannot speak hausa speak your language will find someone to interpret there should be no pressure whatsoever this is the house of god it's not a police station it's not a prison cell it's not um, any paramilitary platform this is where god's people should find expression within the jurisdiction of the word of god so i just want to encourage everyone please media find a way of promoting this that i've said online so that the our family both here and diaspora will know that we are interested in knowing what God is doing and, and frankly speaking the list of the reasons is that which has to do with you know what God is doing through the man of God the most important thing Jesus said and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men testimonies are publicity strategies it is important nobody wants to waste his time in a church a place where nothing works um, human beings are not that free people have serious things to do with their lives and their destinies and they need to be encouraged they need to be motivated that their time in God's presence will be a time that is worthwhile the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus amen and amen um, the second is concerning our teachings now we remain grateful to God in this house for the remarkable, literally without exaggeration, the remarkable testimonies that come from the teachings. God has anointed these teachings. It's more than the person who has communicated these truths. The teachings work because the spiritual content in the messages are true. They are not opinions. It's dangerous to teach opinions our lives are too short too small and too limited to create doctrines out of our experiences and so we teach the Word of God the principles of the kingdom and those who believe and apply the truths that follow inevitably will return with testimonies and so do not leave the distribution of the teachings to just the media the PR and so on and so forth I think for me one of the greatest um ways you can bless anyone that is cheap and affordable more than getting clothes and all of that is to just grant them access to these truths there's almost a teaching on every major subject matter find somewhere find someone who is hurting in an area find where there is ignorance find where there is oppression find where there's limitation and just help to be a bridge even with these teachings it's something that must be intentional are we together believers must be trained and mentored to know that these is not just a way of promoting a man's agenda is your contribution towards kingdom advance while you are struggling to know what you are called to do while you are still flogging it out with destiny <coughs> excuse me what what have you called me to do oh Lord you can start from there are we together praise the Lord um, the third is that um, because of the overwhelming need our uh, public relations department uh, they have communicated the fact that um, people call all over and the lines we have are limited and so we have decided to at least add one more official line for the PR please if you can get it to the media let's project it if we have it so that the people can have it down 
so add it please um the official lines of this ministry for correspondence and all of that is handled by our public relations department so please do well to have it down so that you can help those who um would want to reach the ministry many times it may be difficult for me to respond to everybody the way we want um, but then our lines are open almost all day almost all week um, so you can take advantage of that praise the lord the last function and then we'll get to the word of god mark chapter 16 we'll read 17 and 18 Part of the apostolic and the prophetic is to be able to understand times and seasons and to guide the body of Christ. Um, again, I've seen in the realm of the spirit the onslaught of the manifestation of the spirit of death. I've seen the spirit of death and the spirit of infirmity and and this this is a plot you know death there are times that death can come over people but there are times that death can come over territories it's not necessarily looking for a particular person anybody that comes under the influence of that spirit will go for it are we together um, so there are three things that we want to address and then we'll get to the word number one is death number two very strange afflictions and infirmities someone will just complain my head my stomach my leg and the person is gone this is how you know that a thing is demonic and then number three although it may not have come to our region but the bible says to pray for the peace jerusalem this act of kidnapping people they just steal a human being now it's not only properties that are taken you know and this is not just an issue of terrorists again it's becoming a lucrative industry and so any even friends steal themselves are we together yes they connive with touts and pick up people and um, demand for all kinds of all kinds of uh, 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 what do we call it ransom you know very ungodly amounts that they call and then eventually they subject the people some people are raped some people are, are harmed the psychology and all of that uh, it's important for us to fortify our spiritual borders and then as part of the larger family body speak i told you that bodies only execute what the realm of the spirit concludes upon are we together if your hand steals something told your hand to steal the hand does not have a will on its own the body without a spirit is dead so everybody who is being inspired to do this there is an ideology that is spiritual in origin are we together uh, and some of these things come as a result of the laziness of people this is why we continue to challenge people to be productive no productive person will sit down and begin to look at the options kidnapping someone is proof of how you have disbelieved your own destiny that means you have concluded that on your own wisdom cannot work for you favor cannot work for you relationships cannot work for you and you settle uh, for kidnapping people mark 16 17 and 18 the bible says there are signs that should follow believers and it says in my name they shall cast out devils number two they shall speak with new tongues let's read verse 18 it says they shall take up serpents and if that means they don't intentionally go and drink but if for any reason they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them then they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover but the tragedy is in psalm 74 and verse 9 please give us psalm 74 and verse 9 read with me please we see not our signs there are signs that the bible says should be seen and the complaint now is that we see not 
our signs. There is no more any prophet. The correct rendition is, is there no more prophet? It's a question. And then he says, is there not any among us that know it how long? That means we do not see the things that the Bible says should be seen. And where are the advocates? Is there no prophet? Is there no representative to tell us how long? To define the limits. Are we together? Part of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic is not in titles. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what the Lord should say. That means it is within the power of the Holy Spirit given to men to command darkness and say, thus far have you come and no further shall you go. Are we together? Please rise up on your feet. Do not be like Esther when her man was plotting the death of the Jews. Word went to Esther and she was careless. And Mordecai said, do not think that because we are outside of the gates, when they are done with us, paraphrasing, they will come back to you. In one minute, I'd like you to stand as a priest that you are and decree and declare, these tripartite spirits we banish first from our spiritual atmosphere. And then out of Kaduna State and this nation, number one, the spirit of death. Please pray. Number one, the spirit of death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Cause the spirit of death. Number two, take authority over strange infirmities infirmities with no medical history demonic oppressions over people number three take authority over the wicked spirit of kidnapping and all kinds of activities of terrorists In the name of Jesus, we command, we decree, and we declare. We stand as watchmen and we declare our territory is sanitized from these operations, from these afflictions in the name of Jesus. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Hallelujah. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. We banish the operation of death first from this family. Second from this city third from this state yes. and fourth from this nation yes. you are a spirit you are not an occurrence we call you by your name and we banish your operation yes. in the name of Jesus Christ yes. number two strange afflictions in the name Shabakatos Kebrakata Shkelebarakatos Ebregeteka Parousia in the name that is above all names any planting in your body that is not of the Christ I curse it now by the God of heaven number three we pray this one is not us we speak to the elements of the earth. We speak to the elements of the supernatural. We command the earth 
and every element of the supernatural that any man see listen let me teach you something you see the earth is a universal point of contact everyone touches the earth the terrorist who wants to kill another person now is on earth his feet is touching the earth and you can use the earth and speak in the name of jesus we speak by the power of the holy spirit let the activity of kidnappers and terrorists within this region and around stop now stop now the bible says that he frustrates the tokens of liars he makes diviners mad so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise and if there is anyone whether your loved ones or whoever that is under the siege of kidnappers we declare their unconditional release in the name of jesus christ these are some of the ways is more than terrorism it's also how the spirit of poverty works when you carry five or ten million and give to rescue someone what if that's your life savings very demonic operations Zaria we speak to you this is our domain in the name of Jesus we draw a line across these spiritual borders and we declare it sanctified in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that any activity that is not the Christ sponsored by the spirit we banish its continuity in the name of Jesus please be seated God bless you you see please understand this the believer is not a cause to creation the believer is not is not is not a nuisance to civilization the believer is not a luggage that our sociology is trying to manage no the ideology that we have been given is an ideology that transforms it does not destroy are we together so it's important that that we continue to emphasize believers please more than knowing who we are we must obtain grace from god to be the light and to be salt not to sit down and hope things change not to sit down and be careless and say it does not concern me you see god has worked with us way past the issue of denominations and personal doctrinal affiliations and all of that we are we are we are members of his body what happens to one happens to all it's an ideology that we must carry it's an ideology we must sustain hallelujah praise the lord thank you thank you for allowing me to do that very quickly we'll get to the business of the night the keys of the kingdom we're on a revision series for some of you who are just coming so many people we honor and we welcome and we truly bless you tonight let's get to the word of god the keys of the kingdom this is part two we're on a revision series um the way that god trains us in this place is very intentional it's very meticulous very defined the the exegesis of scripture here is not just meant to be part of the things that happen in a service but by the grace of god there is a portrait there is there is a picture of what god seeks that we become praise the lord and as we strive by the guidance of his spirit and through the spirit of wisdom we continue to bring teachings that are spiritual in context that are balanced life applicable and are transforming again and um every once in a while before we get into another level god would grant us grace to do um somewhat of a revision that means to go back and look at the things that we have learned by the spirit correct the gray areas because you see nobody leaves what works 
Nobody lives what works. And if our Christian lives, um, if it continues to be unfruitful, we will be frustrated. The Bible says, Herein is our Father glorified, John 15 and verse 8, that ye bear much fruit. Not just fruit, much fruit. It says, So shall ye be my disciples. This will be proof that I mentored you. Your results will show that I mentored you. Are we together? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. We started off last week. Jesus was speaking about the keys of the kingdom. And I started just a quick recap how that there is only one key to the kingdom. One key to the kingdom. And that key is not an object, is the person Christ. Christ being the door, the authorized entrance point. We observed last week that um, there are not only doors, there are also windows. There are other illegitimate routes into a house. But the authorized channel to any house is called a door. If a visitor jumps through your window, he's not welcome, although he's in your house. Are we together? So Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus never said, I am the window. I am the door. There is only one key to the kingdom. The Christ, the door. But when you get into the life of the kingdom through the experience that we call new birth, then the kingdom functions by keys a key is a symbol for access access so the keys of the kingdom are the truths that grants the believers access to function effectively to be in experience a true representation of the image the character of the christ and to manifest the possibilities that are in this kingdom and um the keys of the kingdom are the access points that activate and deactivate possibilities. The faith life is a compendium of infinite possibilities. That means there is no end to how far. There is no end to the potentials that are contained in this faith life. My life and your life, no matter how yielded, cannot exhaust all the possibilities that are contained in the Christ. And so our life should become an, like, like an explorer's life. We continue to explore different dimensions of the possibilities contained in the Christ. I said something last week that I would like to say before we take off from there. The word of God is very important in helping believers know God and in helping believers become effective. And the word of God is important because it defines the boundaries of God's commitment to man. Please, you have to understand this. God is not indefinitely committed to man. There's no record in scripture that allows for God to be committed to you anyhow. He's committed by predefined conditions. And that condition is encapsulated in the word. It's important to know this. Now, his compassion can respond to any issue of your life. But it takes the word of God to define how far his hand can come towards you. It's very, very important. Compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of a man's infirmity. But he has exalted his word, the Bible says, above his name. I say this because many times believers think that God is committed to them and we continue to quote a lot of wise sayings, trado African approaches and we believe that it will, it will draw sympathy and because God is love, he will respond. But then you will never see results until you bring yourself in alignment to the word of God and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. This is very, very important. The word of God defines the boundaries of God's commitment. The word of God shows how far he can help you. Any provision that the word of God does not allow cannot be accessed by the saints. So it is important that believers don't learn and know the word of God just as an option if you want to be spiritual, then take the word seriously. 
if you don't want to be spiritual you can roam around the things of god no there is no victory outside of the word the word of god is the testament is god's commitment is his vow the word of god is a definition of how far the terms and conditions it's important that we know the word there's no place in scripture where the bible records that satan comes to steal prayer no he can stop prayer but he cannot steal prayer but if that seed is sown the parable of the sower the seed is the word of god and satan cometh immediately not a demon he comes himself and he steals the word are we together very very important so we have to pay attention to the word right we began to show the sequence of spiritual growth last week how that it matters for us to understand the sequence of spiritual growth when a believer encounters new birth what next what is the next assignment listen there are many frustrated believers today because of the religion of following christ now take note of my choice of words the religion that means that there is no life and no power there is no intent and no goal why do i have to serve god are we together so when believers get born again there's no motivation for spiritual growth there is no motivation for increase at best their motivation may be a desire to be like their pastor meaning to go into ministry and this is not a very proper way of mentoring believers because the vicissitudes of life itself is they are distracting there are too many things in life to distract a believer you must be able to have a road map that guides if i get born again where do i go from here and why the average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved now it looks very simple but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about god and it matters what you are told it matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you you can hate god because he was wrongly proposed you can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of christ in a lopsided way and i told us again and i've shared it here in this house that how we grow matters not just that we grow now think with me for instance that this gentleman just got born again and the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity as powerful as it is this guy is already in trouble you see there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense you see that now if this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh conformity to the image of the christ you know how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life that life of surrender the prosperity is going to destroy this man he will have the money because the principles work but it will be at the expense of his soul but the bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth so you see his assignment 
he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just pick anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the Holy Spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit. Because the Bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. Number two, the Bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. He cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned. Are we together? No matter how illiterate, no matter how educated, no matter how enlightened, the moment you want to start that spirit work, you have to subscribe to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is very, very important. If you do not subscribe to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you will, you will work with God purely based on intellect or based on the sociological context of life. And all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm. You will not be able to walk with the Holy Spirit and walk with God outside of this realm. If you are together, please say amen. amen. You can mechanically pick the Bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the Christian faith. But this book that you see has to be opened by the Spirit. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. It's a popular scripture here. Please give it to us. Isaiah 29 and verse 11 read with me is projected please one two read and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot for it is what notice it didn't say it is closed it is sealed so you can open it and yet it is sealed Next verse, 12. And the book is delivered unto him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. You see, there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the Holy Spirit. This is very important because the ways of God are not the ways of man. The methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting and until you become spiritual by your submitting to the holy spirit you will not be effective in your spirit work that was why naman refused to wash he was angry he was embarrassed what kind of nonsense is this you brought me to embarrass me before a prophet the prophet did not even come out to even honor me is it that he's not aware that i am naman the captain of the syrian army and the little lady encouraged him and said look um if he had told you to do another thing that is worse wouldn't you do it and the man humbled himself watched seven times in a very dirty river and then came out clean the ways of god alas master for it was missing they where they met with prophet elisha was very very straight narrow and they went to a greater place and while they were felling the trees the axe head fell you would expect that he would say who can swim so that we'll get it quickly but th that was already a hopeless situation scientifically he said where fell it and he took a stick threw it there and all of a sudden it came back the prophets began to eat and they shouted there's death in the pot and he took flour and sprinkled on it and said go ahead and eat it's been cleansed so the, the ways of God are a mystery. You have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people and then a brazen serpent is lifted and they are told to just look at it. That whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one. Very, very powerful the ways of God. In God's economy, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Are you seeing that now? Yes. So it takes being spiritual to really, really 
become a kingdom person. Now I began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom. We'll continue from there. Bless God. Number one, we looked at two last week. Number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing God. God only, God first, God above all. And we explored the first three words of Genesis or first four words of Genesis 1 verse 1. I'm just doing a quick recap. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, the first four words, in the beginning, God. The beginning of everything must be God. You do not ask God to come and patch your life. You don't create your agenda, create your plans and ask God to endorse it. Uh -uh. He's Alpha, Omega, not Kronos, Omega. God will not join you on the way. He has to start. Are we together? The Bible does not call him Kronos. You don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions. He's Alpha and Omega. And so we challenged ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom, those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt God and his purposes above their desires, above their intentions. I want it this way. But I acknowledge the fact that when God becomes above everything, he protects, he preserves. Two, we spoke about the concept of success, tying it with the law of the mind, is very important. That transformation is important in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we reign by light, we reign by knowledge, and that knowledge comes through transformation. Transformation through renewal and enlightenment. Take note. Transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment. Renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of Christ. Not everything in your mind is dangerous. Not everything in your mind is wrong. But when you come to Christ, the Holy Spirit, Adam, before his fall, did not need renewal. There was no need for renewal. Are we together? The content in his mind and his understanding came directly from God. Satan began to sow a seed of an information when jesus came the bible says um, god now came walking in the cool of the day adam where art thou he said i heard thy voice but i hid because i was naked and he said who told you that means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me who told you who told you you have banked an information that is a seed that will grow are we together yes i hope you know that it is not only god that is the sower of the word. It is not only Satan too sows. Remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears. While men slept, an enemy. Whoever that enemy is, we know he's a farmer too. Because he sows. So you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with. You can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing. This is why transformation is powerful. You look at a little child, a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years, the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from. The baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying, the baby is laughing. Where did that come from? Certainly not from the womb, but where, for God's sake, did that come from? When has the child associated cry with joy? Are we together now? So you see the kind of world that we live in. He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. And then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways. The anger from the boss man. I mean, what he would do, someone depriving you of your rights. And you know, all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding. And then the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, I beseech thee, brethren, it's not a sermon, it's a plea, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed. Here it is. Do not be conformed to this world is the Greek word aeon. 
the thinking pattern the system of operation that comes with this cosmos it says but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind and that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of god philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset there was a thinking there was a body of conviction that made Jesus that flawless when he was on earth. And he's saying, allow. The word let there means allow. Allow this body of beliefs. Allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding. Very important. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. Then it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind. When your understanding is darkened, you are alienated from the potential, the experience of the life of God. It says through the ignorance that is in them. Transformation is very important. There is almost no hope for an effective Christian life for any believer who ignores transformation. And it's important because Africa is a very superstitious continent and in Nigeria where people who are very spiritual we would, we would opt for wise sayings. We would opt for a mix of trado African Christian approaches and would not settle down for the word of God that is balanced, truthful, intelligent, and transforming. And this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of Christians that we have. And all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of God. And it's not entirely so. Because there is a species of man that God cannot produce. So when you see that kind of man, you know that there was a corruption somewhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The mind is very powerful. I taught us about success. That true success in the kingdom is not something that we do. True success is what you attract by who you become. This is very powerful. There are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially, spiritually. They want to do things. And there is a place of doing. There is a place of action. But action is only relevant when there is transformation. Success is what you attract by who you become. There is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain. It's impossible. Are we together? You cannot see Papa Ia Deboe, for instance, at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish. His transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience. Somebody will be called. You will think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him. But someone will stand up and say, Sir, please go back home. Give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result. Are you seeing how life works? You don't say, I hate poverty. You are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level. So this is a mistake that believers continue to make. We try to do things. And the things we do are higher than who we are. So the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels, our mindsets. Success is a product of growth. It's more than doing things. God can tell you you're going to have 5,000 members, but you have to grow. It's more than just prophecy. There are ethics that you honor at every level of growth. And as you continue to transit, your results continue to change to reflect the change in you. As you change, your clothes will change. As you change, your honor will change. As you change, your communication, your understanding, as it's changing, your relationships will change. Everything continues to change to reflect the changing person. You don't go and look for friends. You attract them by your growth. Are we together? You don't go around hand picking people. This is, the, this is the labor that God saved us from through transformation. Look how painful it is to go and select friends. How do you know the person will not change tomorrow? Allow the wisdom of God to select them. 
your assignment is to grow does not deep call on to deep when you grow it begins to change you cannot be wealthy and have poor friends it's not about driving them the law edits itself it edits your possibilities the moment there is that transition your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave you don't have to say i must i'm tired of this place no that's not wise grow there is a level to which you grow your one room will push you out and the laws of god will back your exit they remained in Egypt until Moses started bringing an information. Moses said, Thus said the God of the Hebrews, your 430 years is exhausted. He didn't preach in one day. They kept hearing it. While they started believing an exodus, there was, there was the, no matter how bound they were, they were forced out of the place. Listen, it is frustrating. This is why a fake life, and oh dear, God bless and help our generation. Gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time. It was authorized to live and it must live. There is no power in existence that can keep it with you. If I bless you with one million, your mind and your mind has not grown to that level. Your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth. It's not the issue of a spirit of, of, of uh, poverty. No. Satan is an opportunist. When he comes, he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy. Satan does not come to a man with a default strategy. His strategy is bespoke. It's made to your mindset. He will study your mindset from it, study your vulnerability, and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down. Satan cometh to me, but did not find anything. Satan comes to men and check, where is darkness? What gives me license? What gives me access? If your prayer life is on fire, he can't attack your prayer life. He will check your understanding of the word of God. They are called rulers of darkness. Their domain is when there is ignorance. Are we together? The law of the mind when i learned this law it changed my life i knew that there had to be an easy way it's difficult to give god glory the way many people seek success your assignment is to grow when you grow from the intelligence of that growth you will be guided on what to do circumspectly the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise and it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy like following the path of growth rather than seeking things. When you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you, that's time wastage. But when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life, that's time redemption. So the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. Say, I'm growing. The third spiritual law, we're doing a revision. Thank you, Jesus. Halus Kapratuskia. The law of faith. Let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch. The law of faith. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19, please. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Read with me. It's projected. One to read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? The law of faith is a very powerful law. The Bible declares again and again in this kingdom, I'm doing a revision, that the just, the believer, one who has been justified in Christ, that you will live by faith. 
the only assurance of your victory the only assurance of tomorrow the assurance of success is faith there is no earthly guarantee given to any man not by any uncle not by any auntie not by any certificate not by any platform the authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith and this is the victory that overcome even by faith are we together what is faith faith is your conviction your conviction your conviction the name given to your conviction about God and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out it's as simple as that but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able he has an ability and I know him I'm persuaded are we together very important come Sheun, look at this please now if I look at Sheun now and I say Sheun, I'm going to give you 1,000 naira the first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks I am my ability my integrity everything comes under pressure at the instance of that word he would have to verify whether number one i have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira and then number two whether i have the ability i may have the willingness the integrity but not have the ability so god allowed his word so we can vet him he's not afraid of being vetted god is saying probe me probe my integrity i've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations so that your conclusion on reading this is that god is not a man that he should lie are we together now it's not something you just believe he tells you go through it i allow you to have this the chronicles of my integrity so that you will believe me when i say i can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes vet it did i not raise joseph did i not raise esther ah it's powerful to believe god there are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system um there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you thirty thousand. you will never rise you will never move listen if it is god he will prove himself faith powerful find a believer that has faith and understands faith now faith is not just blindly believing faith is conviction are we together and that conviction comes through understanding you have really understood god and his ways when you know where how you contribute in terms of your partnership your participation listen bible faith does not leave everything to god there is always man's role in that equation please understand this bible faith will never allow god to just do everything there is always the participation and your participation is your believing god and then subscribing to the terms the conditions that guarantee for that outcome this is where many believers continue to miss it faith is more than just confession faith is more than just receiving as important as they are they are all equations in that i mean variables in that equation of faith but bible faith is not bible faith until you find the condition allocated Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that the Lord thy God now watch this that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you condition if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord if thou shalt pay attention if you place value on the speakings of God, if you place value on his ways, his intelligence, his methodology, you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there. 
Bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm exalted above all nations. You are correct. But if you stop there, you will live a frustrated Christian life. There is a condition. While you speak, you release that word. But more than that, you have to go back and find out. So what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, 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 not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you are understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. You must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, You come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, um, uh, the, 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 one, the, the one whom you have defied. He was speaking to Goliath. You have to stand and look at life and say you may look like a mountain but faith deflates mountains it is true it is true time will fail me he says to talk of Gideon Jephthah Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions listen let me tell you the truth there is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun it takes faith to subdue say in the name of jesus Amen. by the faith of god at work in me i subdue every mountain don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely no 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 there is nothing special about challenges it is defeat that should be a surprise don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it and let the god of heaven who is not a man that should lie come and prove himself in your life every testimony here is faith the equation of faith completed trusting god please don't doubt god i know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on god we make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two one plus one plus god is any answer he says it should be any answer by what standard will you say he failed if a house is my own i can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance it's my house so you don't say because i entered here yes this is my house you are a visitor anywhere i show you that the door is you follow there kai this god hmm. god can decide to say 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together this is god for you 10 years in one hallelujah the law of faith let's run faith is very important we have dealt with the law of faith here we have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective christian life the law of value Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him 
and bring him before great men this is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie sincerely let me tell you this is one of the I, I, I can't use the word truest scriptures but this scripture you see please have a lot of regard for it the gift of a man truly can make room for him it didn't say we'll show him where his room is until then there is no space for you the gift will make room for you like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space and because of your honor for that visitor the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room so where there was no space for you that your gift can come and say what is going on here the table of greatness where is my space sorry there's no space no it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne the gift of a man the gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness it's very important classic um, story is the story of Joseph Genesis chapter 41 when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46 I don't want to go into it forgive me I'm rushing because we're just this is a revision series I'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom these are the truths we engage if you don't engage this you will fail I tell you sincerely they are not opinions they are not doctrinal perspectives when Jesus came he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the Beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom it's, it's important that we understand the methodologies of God. It's not, the discourse, it's not an invention of one man. Please understand this. J Jeremiah 6, I believe, verse 16. Let's go there and then we'll return here. Jeremiah 6, 16. The Bible says to ask for the ancient part. It says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old part. Wherein is the good way? It says when you find it, walk therein. And ye shall find what? Rest. Another word for rest is Sabbath. The Sabbath of a man comes. The Bible says labor to enter your rest. That labor is not a labor in the flesh. It's a labor of understanding, understanding, understanding. That there is a belief system. There is a construction. When you hold the keys of the kingdom, they can bring you in experience to your Sabbath. So two people, all saved by God, can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results. And the difference is not the love of God for them. For the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is their understanding. Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, have I not said ye are gods? And all of you, not some of you, are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So your destiny is not just left to God. How can I lie, Sharia? Whatever will be, will be. Those wise sayings are poisonous. Are we together? The law of value. Very, very powerful. You will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings. Your value decide who, decides who pursues you. It is true. And who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward. God designed life to operate based on a reward system. There's no sentiments to it. Life operates based on a reward system. That means that no matter how bad my background is, no matter how bad it was, there is a bailout system. I can be valuable. I can find my way out of every nonsense in life. It has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you. It's a principle backed up by God's own integrity. When you discover and you develop problem-solving abilities, when you become fruitful, when you become productive, it's impossible to be ignored. Regardless of tribal affiliation, regardless of sentiments, regardless of age and gender, the world 
does not have too many people who are valuable. Please understand this. Potentially, we all are. But in experience, there are few people per territory. You can, you can do a random sampling. There are few people per territory who are really valuable. So it's impossible to be ignored. It's like holding bright light in a very dark night. How could you be ignored? I show you what will take away mediocrity from your life. It's impossible to be ignored. You may ignore my background, that's all right. You may not like my persona, that's all right. But the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you, and I will never settle for less. I know there's more that's found in you. There is more, there is more than a weak and a mediocre life. There is more than a life of just getting married, having children, and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life. There is more than that. There is a life of meaning and glory and beauty. He has called us into glory and virtue. He has called many sons into glory. Where your life becomes an influence for his majesty. Your life becomes an inspiration to a generation. More than just food to eat. More than a little house here and there. I have one house, two cars, one estate, one business, a wife, my children, and that's it. That's a mediocre life. There's more than that. Are we together? The Bible says that you are the light of the world. Jesus is teaching here now. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. It says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. It says, you are the light of the world. Then it says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon who you are and the works of your hands your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder one wonder connecting to another when people think they have exhausted a dimension here you come like the eagle another page god does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity no it's a very poisonous proposition he desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life, but just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causes us always to triumph. Are we together? And Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so much. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. 
Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you, being an Igbo person gives you, being a Northerner gives you, being a Middle Belt, a, South, a Southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise, people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background, but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me, but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. It said, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God. When God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer, that was the light bearer, an effulgence of the light of God, did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Abba! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will float with they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways he says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation. Don't give yourself cheap to life. Just because culture, just because your past, just because your failures have concluded about you. Shake that off and know that there is a way. 
Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Mm -mm. While they were discussing the death of Jesus, he had resurrected and was on the throne. Please sit down. The law of value. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power. There are mysteries in the kingdom. These are the keys. Please understand this. Please understand this. The next key that I want to teach us is what I call, you know it, the mystery of exemption. Huh. That there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture officially was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel. Are we together? And that when the angel of death saw the blood, he would pass over. That is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you. Passing over is a possibility in this kingdom. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall come nigh thy dwelling, but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Let me tell you, the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you. Forget about your current result. Just focus on believing it. Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities. Your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says, it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied 
But a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, what do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother who said the head of John the Baptist. And the head of John the Baptist went. There are things that should not happen that you can make happen. And there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening. Praise. When you praise God, it's called perfected praise. Praise that is intentional. Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horses and his rider, not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not, you find it in Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Yes. Praise. <clears throat> you exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice sacrifice is very powerful psalms 50 and verse 5 i'm just doing a quick recap we have all these teachings you can go and listen to them gather unto me my saints the bible declares they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice by sacrifice by sacrifice there are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered sacrifice the Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. And that night, not the next day, that same night, the Lord came to him and said, Solomon, ask what he will. And then he asked, not for the life of his enemy, but for wisdom to govern the people. And he said, you did not ask for the life of your enemy, nor riches, nor this. Because of that, I will give you an understanding heart, he said. And with it, I will give you riches, I will give you wealth, and honor and so on and so forth sacrifice is powerful unfortunately i know that it has been abused you know especially by women of god who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abused the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bathwater. Sacrifice is powerful. You can sow your way out of realms. You can sow your way into realms. Sacrifice that is done with understanding, not manipulation, not coercion. As a testimony, one time when, when we started Koinonia, I think the, f the first year or so, we're just about a year or so. I remember one time 
the beginning of that year, the Lord gave an instruction to carry everything, literally everything, 0.00. .00 carry everything and so. And I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. Not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a mother of miracles to this ministry, even financially. Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law. Spiritual law. Kabarakatuskiada. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. These are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships please understand this everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships we are relational beings in fact the faith work starts with a relationship a relationship with jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and David said, ah, I answer amen for this for even myself. And David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Not for his sake. For Jonathan, because you are related to Jonathan. I want to change your life. Next verse. And there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Is a son, but it's a son that cannot help himself. Next verse. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And he said, Behold, he's in Laudeba, and so on and so forth. Verse 5. Let's hurry up. I just want us to get the, the central message. And the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of Amiel from Laudeba. 6. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. 
And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the Spirit of God. Man can show man kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Ah! What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah, none like you. What are you turning to say? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. We are talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater, my God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No, it's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9, we're reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, Please listen. I have given unto thy master's son, all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. For and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited. But in this kingdom, there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost 
shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Listen. And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. Did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said, it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check, but he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two, the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. There are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there. Because their stewardship is a covenant. They are not even there because of what they did. They are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect. Although they are unbelievers. Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel because he will always remember abraham my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth in a desert land yet they are prosperous because god is a covenant keeping god so when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living find out their grandfather who loved god arranged something for them with god forget that they are rebelling while they are there their children will pay for it but for that time, no, your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor. And you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results. What I tell you is called spiritual intelligence. It's true. These are the kinds that you need favor, influence. Did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph? He just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph. Notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh, they were allowed to serve their God. And Pharaoh gave him he, the wife of the priest, Potiphera, the priest of On. 
as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere and he still gave him as a wife and in, in the land of Goshen the people can't it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph that was when their oppression started so even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by god you will see a big church of five thousand people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people i have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of god but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a i mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people i'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer lord send me gifted people make my life easy you have a business because of scarcity you you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so so so, so person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person, i'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing ceo and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted i pray this prayer all the time and i tell you sincerely and i i i, I stand broken before god to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people the workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people has saved me the stress of any other thing i focus on the ministry of prayer and the word please you need gifted people in your life otherwise life will be hard you can't do everything by yourself hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth the midwife that threw Mephibosheth she was called a midwife what happened that she threw the guy down do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child lord send me gifted people in the name of jesus christ and the last of all very quickly they are called burden bearers the last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers during the your down times in life you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne. They love you because of who you are. The flat tree of success can kill. People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died there, there would be a problem because he needed to die a cause, not just to die a man. Cause is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So if he died on the way, that's not redemption, that's obituary. And then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene. The black man the nigger and he the guy gladly carried the cross let me tell you 
I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said, you will become our king. It's not everybody that is looking for results. There are people who will stay with you. As the landlord is driving you, they will stand there and say, no, I will not run away. Men are selfish by design. Please, every leader, hear me. You need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers. Men and women who can cry with you. They can say, Hosanna, but when you're on your way to the cross, you will only see Mary and John there. Burden bearers. There are men of God when they are, we start building project, everybody just runs away. When the building is completed, people come and dance again to acknowledge God. Burden bearers. Even the disciples ran away. But there was a woman who said, let me risk my life. I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body. I hope you know that was why she went. She carried to go and purify his body. What if she died on the way? A burden bearer will be like Ruth to Naomi your God will be my God and your people will be my people many people when they are in their dark days they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well but you must pray for burden bearers there is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say pastor I love you I will stand by you all the way are we together I'm brother still from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen, there are burden bearers. Again, I thank God for the privilege. You know, many men of God, for many men of God, their greatest fear, in fact, many successful people, their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad. I tell you, God has taken that fear out of my life. God has given me not only trusted people not only gifted people not everybody old but there are people god has put in my life that i know if they put a gun today they will stand and take that bullet lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand That's why I will lift up my voice. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace on the night. No need to cry, cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Listen, you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound. Listen, listen, please sit down. We'll pray shortly. Listen, the Bible talks, Jesus himself was teaching, and Jesus spoke about a man. And robbers waylaid that man. Are we together? And he was on the a priest came and a priest saw him and left going to church. A Pharisee came and left him. But there was a man called Good Samaritan. No name. Good Samaritan. He was identified by where he was coming from, his territory, and his character. Good Samaritan. And the man sat down. He bandaged this man. Took him to a private inn to keep him. And said, I will take care of him. I'm about to go and do something. When I come back, whatever the cost is, 
that's a burden bearer that's not an advisor there are people who will come and see your child your daughter your son and look at things work and say ah, what is this you mean he has been writing wired for five years i will conduct a personal tutorial when you see a burden bearer you will think they charm them they will carry your own load on their own head you are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer you have entered the sabbath the person may not be a millionaire he will be collecting hundred thousand and depositing sixty thousand say this is my contribution there are real burden bearers not everyone on earth is wicked you have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you you select your possibilities in prayer this ministry by the grace of God has been privileged to have burden bearers men and women who are raised by the spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but I've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if God did not call them themselves burden bearers it is painful to be alone it is painful to be alone there are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children they had just five or six of their own children but they raised up to 50 children of other people and these people in old age will be in the hospital are we together now looking for one million for a treatment and all those 40 people they raised not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it a burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping that's his assignment to insist till you laugh why are you about to go away so i'm in 200 level my father just died my mother just died they don't sit down and say are you from the same village that's not a burden bearer is your what was your father did he know my father mm -hmm. i stand and i say this come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number i will be putting 10 10 000 until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now do you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers that's why they don't announce we have a project of you know god designed men to be burden bearers this crying on stage for money every week no a real burden bearer will sit down and find needs why is this pastor's shoe removing that shoe would the pastor would never wear that shoe again had this shoe no no it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we notice that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer may your wife be your burden bearer husband and may your husband may, may, what's the next one now may your husband be a burden bearer wife be, because listen let me tell you if your spouse is not a burden bearer you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital you've seen these things happen 
Some persons are in the hospital. Some people are selling their property. Hoping that they will die. And then they later come and leave. It's, it's when they are alive. They now find out that half of the estate had gone. In expectation that you will die. Is that a spouse? This is why we will continue by the spirit of God. Listen to me. Let me just digress for 10 seconds. This is why we will continue to guide people. You know, sometimes people make very, very poor marital choices carelessly. These are the things to think about. Father, is this person a burden bearer? Not for now, for the days that come. There are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man. He can't talk, he can't walk, yet she's laughing. They say, say something about your husband. Say, even if we return in this life, I want him to still be my husband. That's a burden bearer. My generation, hear me. Open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life. Burden bearers. In my life, I have seen this. There are men of God who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there. I am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world and you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said, look, this and that and that and burden bearers. The Lord gave the word. He said, great is the company of them that published it. If you don't have a burden bearer, you will pay for everything. The one who will help you drive your car, you will pay. The one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you. Please just go. Live your life. Leave this old woman. And Ruth said, no way. No way. Mama, I'm not going anywhere. That means even if my future is ruined, let it be at the instance of our relationship. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Our time is gone. Ah. Can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor? Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me you will go home after the grace mystery second only to the law of encounter is the greatest truth I have found the law of honor the mystery behind the sudden rising of people like a charm a man just evaporates and you don't see him again and the only place you find him is above honor what is honor honor is the discerning please listen five minutes and we're done honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and then if need be honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man 
Please help him out. For their uniqueness. Honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people. Please, if you can, I recommend that you listen to my teaching that I did at the King's Court, RCCG, the King's Court. Listen to it. I spoke on the book of Esther. The book of Esther starts in a very interesting way. Please lend me five minutes. We're still at that. The Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man, a king called Ahasuerus. The Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his, his might. And then the Bible tells us about a woman called Vashti. Are we together? So the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman. The king calls for Vashti to come. To come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and Vashti refused when she refused the king being a very good man he kept quiet with the issue but then the advisors of the king said uh, 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 uh. this woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman if you permit this dishonor our wives and our women will start the same thing too do something about it and Vashti is banished. Are we together? That means everything was in place in a palace. The throne is still there. The treasures are still there. But dishonor is about to divide a kingdom into two. Everything still in place. Intelligence is there. The security there. Her man is there. But one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene three a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called Shushan, are we together now? The little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king. Honor. She honored the man and she came. Honor and favor works peri pasu. There may not be time to talk about favor, but if you, if you, if you practice honor automatically, you will find favor. Favor is the reward for honor. Are we together? So when she came there, the Bible says in Esther chapter 2, please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17, that there was a grace for favor that was upon her. Now when the turn of Esther came and so on and so forth, she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her favor is a grace that works with sight when the, when the grace for favor is upon you only a blind man will ignore blessing you provided there is a man that has the eye that can see they are compelled to bless you verse 17 and the king loved esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but her surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of vashti are we together and then when you read on you will find out that a lot began to happen and she declared a fast because of the threat of her man his plot to destroy the people of god and she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer the scepter and invited and said what should i do a wise woman look at honor honor is a weapon in that in the book of esther there is no priest in the book of esther there is no prophet 
in the book of Esther there is no apostle in the book of Esther there is no war there is only a woman but she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor she honored her man to his grave honor is a weapon it not only lifts it can kill a wise a foolish woman would have told the king and said king her man wants to destroy us will you watch your beautiful bride go see that but a wise woman when he gave her an opportunity her honor she discerned his mood and she said oh king I want to give you what the first wife didn't give you it was her not honoring you that took her out of the place grant me the opportunity to present a banquet and the king said finally I find a woman who understands that with all humility I am king over 127 provinces talk about my province first before my request don't before your don't come before me and request talk about the province don't ignore the achievement it's a formula for attracting the attention of great men don't come before a great man and say I'm broke no are you not aware his company is doing well you start like Esther the province and the palace and his interest then your needs come later so when you go to this king called your father when you start it is hallowed be your name then thy kingdom come then your will O king be done on earth then when you are done then give us this day our daily it's a formula the king's interest first before your needs so Esther prepares a banquet and then notice she also requested please let her man also come when you fight a great man's friend too soon even if it's your enemy you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally her man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it he said do it again he said with all pleasure my king honor remember somebody is dying no but honor is the one killing the person and then another banquet is prepared and then the bible says she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes there is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people who is that that her man look at a wise king he didn't comment he stood up and went to his garden went around his lounge and was just thinking and while he was thinking you see but when when it's time up for your enemy anything will be problem the man went to the king, the queen to kneel down you know how you kneel down and just say kill me here the king now ah, you are even trying to rape my wife on top that's the end of it couldn't he beg from a distance he now came and knelt down close to the queen he, he's just doom and listen the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. Haman, didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. That was the end of it her man is hung on that same gallow mordecai occupies her man's position esther occupies vashti's position so who said god cannot replace men who said god cannot lift please hear me honor is powerful dishonor is dangerous there is only one reason why men fail in life carry this message dishonor to God dishonor to men 
dishonor to principles one more time dishonor to god dishonor to men and dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time i have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister i will never never dishonor the man of god dishonor their protocol dishonor their system i will walk within what is provided it's called honor it's not weakness honor your father and your mother that your days may be long i tell you why many young people are dying like chickens dishonor 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 the law of honor has changed my life the law of honor has lifted me lifted this great ministry you can earn a living practicing honor honor is a stream of income when they say mention your streams of income don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry say honor a wise man will clap for you honor is powerful it can change your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters honor is powerful i continue to walk this law like a chess and you walk this law there is no power in existence I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry. I truly love them and I honor them. We prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way, a token of honor. Honor is very powerful. Let me tell you this. When God makes men like you, no matter what is done, a, within the context of that generation, you have entered your Sabbath. It is not enough for God to like you alone. The man he uses must like you. God can tell Pastor Femi, come Pastor Femi, I'm rounding up. God can tell Pastor Femi to bless me. He can reject that instruction. While he's struggling with obedience, I'm suffering. I will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed, but it will remain in the dream. God agreed, a man disagreed, I'm paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor is what we continue to teach in this ministry please hear me you are part of this spiritual family one of the signature traits of your life must be honored don't talk to people anyhow you see elderly people you insult everybody huh no an elderly woman is carrying something mark please can i help you oh i'm a man of god so what demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence don't dishonor our children you see my children here even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their cloth. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said, these people are just lucky. All these people. How can a young man... If not, uh, I hear your father was this and that. You see, dishonor is why many people are poor and broke. They see every rich man and just think he was dash, he was luck. No. Every successful man, especially a successful young man. You no know, one time we were traveling somewhere and I sat close to someone and I was sleeping. It was so bad. You know this kind of sleep? You are going like this all around because you are tired. And then, you know, the person was trying to, ah, you're a young man. What kind of sleep is this? I just looked at him and I nodded my head. I said, you see, this is the kind of thing you are talking about. You are not asking why I'm seated where you are seated at my age. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen, please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. 
and someone does not have a job the person who does not have a job you can honor your way i've taught it commanding result listen to it one day get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job don't say it's my younger brother it's my younger sister it's my when i was in in, in ss uh, uh, ss3 it was all those all those superstitious trado african approach to life you, you you will be punished again and again i have a great deal of respect for people who honor me sincerely if you if you if you trivialize what i represent i will not fight you but i will never prophesy to you you will not be you will not be close you will not be around my life again because i'm going to waste my time i don't love i don't hate you i will not do that i will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old no i honor all men Beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous to your growth. Not to flatter you, but please, if you have 127 provinces, it is not a bad thing to have a feast. O oh, Ahasuerus. 127 provinces is not a kiosk. let us learn to practice honor some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents your father is a prof your mother is a prof you are there sweeping the ground in life you can say daddy mommy please whatever i have done whatever needs to come on my head how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare i'm telling you this there are parents who never went to school but they raised 10 children not one of them is an arm robber you think it's just there is a grace there one child is about to kill you go and meet them buy something they like and say please place something on my destiny when i was about to start ministry i met my father and my mother and i told them i said i told my mother i said you're a pastor's daughter your father was a pioneer my grandfather was the first cooking president the first cooking president and is that pioneer grace I want I knelt down when you are too big to honor you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor There are fathers of faith today that want to invite me. And you know, sometimes our precious fathers, respectfully speaking, they also don't know the schedule. But I've helped the protocol to see just be open. Be open. I will see how I will adjust anything. Not that you stand and say, I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and crash down. Honor is powerful. You are the one who loses when you dishonor men. We have to stop here. Teach your children to honor. Don't see a stranger and come and slap him. You spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say, I did not give birth to this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must change. You must become like your father. Pamper your child to have something, some, produce something that would destroy you. There are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague they are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi the pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closes towards you i never find a man that carries something i need and i will keep quiet with it now one day god will give you an opportunity to see how i honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret i had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room. I was granted the opportunity and the tour, and I said, Please grant me the grace. 
Don't say what is there. Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. When I lay down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to David Yongicho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yongicho called him to come and pray for him. Ah. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, no, I know that I will pray for you, but I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? Yes. The gentleman may not have money but he has character. It's a grace and it's transferable. The person seated next to you, no matter what happens, there is a covenant of supplies. Quarter to shame, help must rise from somewhere. You think it's not an issue to honor? Some of our mothers and fathers seated here, the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives. They can just look at you and say, bless you, and that's it. And many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it. We never rise, we never shine, and our light never comes. Please rise up on your feet. I apologize for taking our time. Hold hands with someone. I'm going to pray. These are the ways of the kingdom. Just one prayer and we are done tonight. I apologize, our time is up. I don't know which of these laws I have shared with you. I don't know which of these mysteries, please hear me. I don't know which of these spiritual mysteries you have compromised on. But it's time to cry to God. I have said, there are many of them. This is a revision. Just come hold him, please help him so that he which of these mysteries that you need to know which one am i missing don't say things are not working in my life nothing works till you engage it there has to be something you are missing maybe it is dishonor maybe you are not putting your faith to work are we together maybe your mind you are trying to acquire things in your life that has not come by growth please whatever category lift up your voice in two minutes let's cry to god we came to church tonight. Church is a place of transformation. The Lord has declared by His Spirit that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. My life is changing. Prophesy to yourself. I'm rising by the Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. One minute and we're done. Outside, pray. Online, please pray. The keys of the kingdom, the mysteries by which we reign, enforce us of divine possibilities upon the life of a man. Hallelujah. Father, we desire to bear fruit. We love you and we want to attain unto that height, that image, that stature. We want to be a people very spiritual. We want to be a people very transformed. We want to not only be ambassadors of the kingdom, 
but we also seek to be agents of national transformation that our lives will not be a nuisance to civilization our lives will not be a nuisance to any society we want to be prosperous we contend for kingdom influence we want to walk in superior dimensions of the gift of the spirit quicken our understanding oh god you have brought us through this revision again to upgrade our lives to insist that we get what works i pray that you break every stony heart in the name of jesus christ give us a heart of flesh give us a heart that is compliant in the mighty name of jesus christ father we decree and declare that we meditate on these things we give ourselves wholly to them and we declare that our profiting will appear unto all everyone who has come under this grace and this influence tonight is blessed in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you and we bless you in jesus name i pray amen and amen